You're tired. Welcome. May the stream put you to sleep. Hello. Howdy. It is officially Dongtober season. Uh, welcome. Hi. Hello. So if if uh, uh, if uh, uh, you want, tis the season to uh, post drawings of Donkey Kong. We've done it for several years now. Uh, but if you join the Discord server, there's a link. Uh, on the Twitch page somewhere. Um, there's a Dongtober channel. The theme this year is Gamer Dong. So, uh, Donkey Kong inside of a game, Donkey Kong playing a game, Donkey Kong fused with the game controller, whatever speaks to you. Whatever that the Also, the theme's optional. Just drawing Donkey Kong is the only real 
reason of the season. Um, can I update the scene mode? To be Donkey Kong? Maybe. We'll see if I have time. But, uh, what? Welcome, welcome. Bongo game? I mean, maybe. Maybe. Uh, truly a reason for a season. Yes, Rise of the Sun. I didn't even see your question. You're welcome. Do Tongovers have to fit the theme? No. No. The theme is, is meant to give you a jumping off point if you, if you don't know what kind of Donkey Kong to draw. But all Donkey Kongs are valid in, in Dongtober. Uh, so join the server. Go look at some... Uh, there's already been some amazing stuff people posted since the announcement yesterday. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. See Dongs in the chat. What well, we got? We got Bar Appetit. We got Bar Appetit. Also, uh, uh, uh... That might be... That might be it, actually. Well, we have Cool Monkey. That's Diddy. Don't think I have a lot of Donkey Kong on, on Twitch. But anyway, um... Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited to start Case 4 today. Um... Not playing crab game. I, I have like eight other games that I want to stream. It's not that I'm streaming this begrudgingly. I'm enjoying this game, but I'm like, God damn it. Just I don't even know what you mean by crab game. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. There's about a bunch of stuff that's come out last week that I want to check out. So I want I want to get through this game, not because I'm in a rush to get it over with, because I'm in a rush to play the 80 other games I want to stream. So thank you. I think I really give this up some stuff. Please do, Jake. Please do. Monkey train. It's the monkey. So uh, let me get caught up on alerts and things. Thank you for the hype train and stuff. Uh, and uh, uh, and we'll we'll just get going. Eek ook e monkey. Uh, so yeah. Uh, 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 bah, bah, bah. Case five is your favorite. I'm excited to get to it. But we got case four first. Uh, so we will do that. But up 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 up. This is such a jam. God. Damn. Uh, there are five cases? I believe so. There's been five cases in every game, right? So far? Have I more than three in the other games? More than three what? I thought it was case just four? Two at four. Oh. And one released with four, but then added a fifth case for the DS release. So I guess three was the first time they were like, let's do more? Hmm. I'm assuming Thursday I plan to be. That is the plan. There's five in this game, two only at four. Huh. Felt longer. Uh, okay. Game one at five, right. But the original Japan release only had four. Because five was new. Thanks for the bits. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, this is the first game. We have five. Dink. Okay, well, we better get going then. Uh, ba, ba, da, ba. uh, first of all, hope there's a clown in this one. Yeah, every, every Ace Attorney stream has a clown in it. What do you think I'm doing here? Um, in between streams, I didn't stream yesterday. I did join Game and Scarity for more Myth Force. Had a good time hanging out, playing that game. Um, so I wasn't streaming. Other people were. Oh, other people are always streaming. I don't know if you knew this. It's a big website. Um, but uh, Thunder Bunny streams dropped a prime for a year. Enjoy your mildly Chris Kelty. And also, uh, uh, I had to do a double take. I was like, that wasn't during the stream. Uh, Lava Fish 23 dropped 20 subs. While I was not streaming. Presumably because it was near the end of September and there was still a discount. RIP September, long live Domtober. Um, but thank you, Lava Fish. I had to look up if they said anything. Thank you, Shiv. No spoil. Post memes in the Discord. There you go. Um, and, and Lava Fish said, lol get subbed, nerd. At like three o'clock yesterday. So thanks. I I don't I don't know who got those gifted subs, but some twenty of you out there got enjoy the emotes. Thank you. Hi. Um. I have thoughts sometimes. Lol, get sub nerds. Enjoy your stinky emotes. Lol, epic prank. Uh, thank you. It's very kind. Uh, B Marie, thanks for seven months. Yeah, woo. Smash man, thank you for a hundred bits. Would you ever consider doing a grab bag style stream playing shorter games from the Switch Online library? So play a game for 30 minutes, then move on to somewhere now you play the Steam demos. Crazy into you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. For me, it's just, it's, it's... Typically, when I started streaming, I did more, like, multiple games in a single stream thing. And I found that just, I prefer to kind of stick to one game per stream in general. Um, the exception is, of course, demos, right? Like, I, I structure those differently. But, um, for the Switch Online games, I'm like, I, for me, it's a little bit all or nothing. It's like, if I only want to play for 30 minutes, I don't know. I, prob I probably would rather do, like, 
a longer stream. Or I'd rather just make that stream shorter, like only stream for like three hours, but check out a game, you know? I don't know, but... Nerd weight bottle? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's a fair question. I just, I, I, I it's... For my own, just like how I like to structure my streams, so it's usually more fun for me to be like, here's what we're doing. Hmm. And then just play Tetris. I mean, I do like Tetris. Happy Donktober! Nerd weight bottle. Uh, Nuclear Sun, thanks for soup. Turn about these nuts. Is that the name of the... Is that the name of the case? Uh, Ospleen, thanks for three years. Thanks for the Prime. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoy your Oki. Thank you so much. Humble... Oh, sorry, not Humble. Bumble, Bianca. Maybe Humble Bumble, Bianca. Uh, thanks for two years. Enjoy your house key. How did we get here? Uh, also, random question. How often do you think about the Roman Empire? Um... I... 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 Not often. I don't know. I feel like this is reference to something. Oh, this meme. Okay. <laughs> like, it's very specific. Um, did it just... Oh, it did just switch from the English version to the Japanese version. Are these different? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, because it's, it's rhythm. It's Remix 9. Gotcha. Thank you some of your VODs. Hey, shrimp. Welcome. Thank you. There's a lot of men think about the Roman Empire like once a week. All memes lead to Rome. That's funny. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't. What song is this? This is Remix 9 from Rhythm Heaven Fever. This is the Japanese version. Uh, when you turn, do you scan it for potential threats? Uh, I did see that. I saw that post. Um, no? No. No, I don't think I do. No, I mean, because, listen, you, you just always sit with your back to a wall. You don't got to scan for shit. Work smarter, not harder. Sit with your back to a wall and know where the closest window is you could jump through if you need to defenestrate yourself. I'm taking these eggs by the whisk, gonna beat them and add salt and pepper. Gonna put them in a skillet, better butter up and stir with a spatula. He's getting for potential victims. Watch me folding them, yes. folding them. It's golden yellow now. Yes. It's hot, so I burn my thumb. But I took a bite, yo. I love to fenestrate. It's defenestrate. Fenestrate would be like jumping into a building through a window. I don't know if that's a word. Defenestration is throwing someone out of a window. Um, is the seed safe? What seed? What? I said what I said. Fair. Also, um, the, thank you for the hammy. That did remind me, um, I mean, I, I haven't made many. L I mean, come on, let's be real. But, uh, I tried to make a Phoenix Wright themed hammy. Didn't quite come together. Uh, but I can share it because I remembered it existed. I made it like a month ago and I was on my computer and I was like, oh wait, I did try making this. And I, and... I'm not, I'm not gonna add it, um, but I might as well share it, um, because I was just kind of like, eh, like, I think it's, it's, it, there's something there, maybe if I workshopped it, but I was like, eh, I'm just gonna try their ideas, uh, here you go. Frames is what I yell into my DS, but I'm not sure why it works, I think the voice recognition's busted, I believe your honor that there's evidence this witness has been coached, the prosecution's cheating, yet you're only mad at me. Objection! It explodes. Uh, hey, it's it's all right. I just was like, eh, eh. I'm just gonna try other ones. Um, but anyway, France. I think it was literally just inspired by the fact the fact that that line of that song starts with France. So, what song is it? It's uh, what did I miss? It's right before Thomas Jefferson's like, what did I miss? What did I miss? Virginia, my home sweet home. That song is hard to wiggle with. Thanks, Shiv. More time, I franced it, I did. Could do one of the cabinet battles, Ace Attorney style. I thought about doing like the battles and I was like, man, like, it's tricky to work with. It's tricky to work with some of those measures and then compress them into a short alert and not have every hammy be like a minute long. Uh, but anyway, um, no worries, Joshua. I thought I'd just share it, but I'm not, I'm not planning on doing it. I gotta be in Monticello, exactly. I want to be in the detention room where it happened. Yeah. She just wants to have burger. Uh, da, 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 da. You're in time for justice. Welcome. Thanks for the raid. Uh, let me let me uh, finish getting the things. Sarcastic Crow, thanks for five bucks. Appreciate it. Paying my birthday tax. Looking forward to rewatching the VOD so I can catch up. Hope you try the Apollo trilogy too, in particular the switch up to the 3D cases. 
Uh, we'll see. I, I, I've, I've said many times my plan. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Uh, but my, my plan is uh, to finish the trilogy and then at some point do the Layton crossover. I'm still bummed we didn't get any news on the new Layton game at TGS. Because because level five was like, we're doing a whole presentation. We're announcing it huge well in advance. Here's all of our games we're going to be talking about. And they had Layton listed and they're like, uh, here's like one piece of art in a booklet. Which is, okay, fine. It just is like, why hype it up, I guess? I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't currently have plans to play the Apollo games. If we do, we do. Uh, feel free to yell at me about it, but that's not what I'm currently planning on doing. So, after the crowd. I just, all of this has just been in service of me playing more late. <laughs> that's that's what it's all for. Uh, I just uh, unexpectedly really enjoy these games. Um, or maybe expectedly. So, yeah. They're the best case in the series. Well, the, the other thing is I know that uh, is a, a couple of them or all of the Apollo games were not directed by Shu Takumi. Um, it's like a separate team, and that's where some people are like, yeah, that's where like things kind of change, which maybe is like fine. You know, change is good. Um, the late and long con. But um, if anything, it makes me more interested in just like playing the games that Shu Takumi was the lead on, um, which might be the greatest games. I don't know. But... Yeah, I know the, the, the great, great Ace 1 and 2, right? We're still stuck. Very mixed. Hmm. 4 is very... It was Shutakumi. Gotcha. So 4 was, and then 5 and 6 were a different team. I should come dressed as Maya, then I can bar spin. Yeah. Spin around. Uh, They go places. Well, I like places. 4 is stellar. Gotcha. Great Ace 1 2 made my favorite entries in the series. Damn. Very different pains. Gotcha. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I have a rec form for a reason. You can yell at me about it there. Uh, Smash my on a bit. Regarding the end of case three, I always found the resolution of the case kind of weak. Furio could have known what the poison looked like when he posed as Phoenix. The fact that I don't even consider this makes me think either the writers overlooked this or back into a corner trying to think of how to resolve the case, and this is the best they can think of. I mean, that's fair. I wouldn't say it was a weak end of the case. IMO. Um. I mean, I'm sure if you sat down, you could find plot holes in every case of the series. For me, it's like more so are there egregious hanging loose threads. That tends to bother me more than like, did you consider from this angle? So, like, that's why with, uh, what was it, case two? Must have been case two. I was like, there's a bunch of parts of this that we didn't get an answer to. And I don't know if that's meant to be it'll come back into play later or if it's just don't worry about it. But then it's like, why make this an important detail that was in the court evidence and like people talked about it in testimony and then we just kind of dropped it and moved on. That that tends to bother me more than like, why didn't prosecution try this angle? You know what I mean? I took the fake crime scene reveal. I, I mean, I, I, it's just an indication that this game's fried my brain, right? They're like, by the way, the, the crime scene happened twice within half an hour. I'm like, mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, what I was mad about was before stream, someone was like, oh, Glenn's name being a palindrome is potentially foreshadowing for there being, like, a mirrored, like, reenactment. I mean, it's not a mirrored reenactment, but it's just, like, it happening twice. I also the claims there were a mirror. I don't know. So. Chute conditioned. The fake crime reenactment setup. Well, it's just like it, it, it's a it's a satisfying it's it's stupid and insane, but it's a satisfying answer to why none of this meshes up. So yeah, I wasn't mad about it. I'm just like this is insane. So yeah, it's a stretch. It is. It's nuts. Uh, Ryan's a turd. Thanks for 15 months. Spook month and October. Welcome. Yeah, I, at some point we'll redecorate the stream and the emotes to be seasonal uh but not today i'm just i'm just uh, an old curmudgeon and i like to um only put up the decorations closer to <laughs> which makes me the villain uh iguana but spooky fourth case today yeah we're gonna do that uh ba -ba 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 -ba. thank you bumble, bumble bianca gifted a sub to nikel exe trumpet wings thanks for soup dong soup Waiter, there's a dong in my soup. Space Queen Leisha, thanks for three years. Enjoy your oki. I found this oki outside of Last Resort Nomori. 
Oh, good. I still need to go back to one of these moons. I wasn't planning on streaming it for the record, but I wanted to do a second playthrough of Amori and do the alternate path. Um, I was interested in doing that. I just, after finishing that game, I was like, I'm too emotionally exhausted to, to go back into this world. I need a break. <laughs> it's really, really good. Amori's like one of my favorite RPGs of all time. I just was like, I can't. I can't anymore right now. I need a break. The other past time, that's what I've heard. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Part of us gonna try more. You should check it out. Yeah, yeah. Have I played Mother 3? Not only have I played it, I did a full playthrough on stream a couple years back. So if that it was my second full playthrough of the game. So it was not a fresh first time playthrough. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in that, that's the, the VODs. There's a playlist somewhere on the channel there. Check them out. Uh, also, Earthbound is on there too. Uh, Bearded Snorlax, thanks for 19 months. Happy Dongtober. Boingry gifted a sub to Jesse Highwind. Smash thanks for 100 bits. I hate seeing all the Bing AI shit posts on Twitter. A lot of them are legitimately good enough to make me think I saw a good artist. Yeah. I know how you feel. I don't, I don't mind the AI posts as much. It's, it's, it's when it's blatantly AI that I'm just kind of like, okay, fair. Uh, it can be, sometimes they're fun. Sometimes there's still people doing some clever things with it. But a lot of the AI tools have gotten to the point where it's like, at first glance, it is convincing. And then it's like, oh, it's AI. It's just kind of like, oh, I thought this was neat. <laughs> and it's it's still neat to just like, person made it? Well, that's neat. AI software, someone made a spiral in MS Paint and then told it to do a lot of math. It's just like, it's, that, it, it, there, there is like a gap here where I'm like, that's still kind of neat. But if you just told me up front it was AI, I'd be a lot more chill about it. It's just like, it feels like you're being misled. But someone's like, look at this cool thing I found. It's like, but if it was made by a person, I'm mad you didn't credit the artist. If it was made by AI, I'm mad you didn't disclose it was AI. Either way, I don't like people just randomly sharing shit without context. I always appreciate when someone's like, this was made with these tools, with this AI thing, whatever. I don't know. That's kind of where I've landed on it right now. I, I booted up Photoshop and the thing popped up that was like, make sure you update to the latest version because we've added generative AI into Photoshop, built in. And I'm like, on the one hand, content-aware fill is basically a precursor to modern AI generation. So it's not like this is new for Adobe to be doing. Um, but on the other hand, it's like, okay, Adobe, how'd you train this AI? <laughs> like, can you give me information about, uh, cause if I use this tool, and then later it turns out that this is all stolen art that generated these pixels for me. I'm not going to feel good about that, Adobe. So, uh, Adobe generate tree, render tree for me. So, yeah. All my homies hate AI. I don't hate AI. I'm just, it's, it's, it's a, it's a losing battle. And so it's like, what matters now is declaring like, to me, what's really important is disclosure. Just be upfront. Like, game developers who are like, oh, uh, we found out that this game developer used a bunch of generative AI in, like, background art pieces in their game. It's like, just own it and just be like, we're a team of three people. Like, there's so many things that have been blown out of proportion because the conversation is so toxic and muddied now. It's just like, we need to just, like, cool our heads and be like, it's, it's, it's not going anywhere. How we talk about it's what matters now. And, uh, it's just a nightmare out here. So, you know. Although we train their AI on their own stock image library, which people consented to put art to, they didn't necessarily consent to put their art in the AI. Good. No, that's bad. That's really bad. Because I'm sure when you upload something to Adobe stock, there's some 5,000 pages of legalese that's like, oh, Adobe owns the right to use these images internally or something, which anyone uploading images to a stock library would probably be fine with, but it's like, hey, that thing you agreed to is a different context than nice. existed when you agreed to these terms. That doesn't feel good. I mean, I wasn't planning on using their, their... I've, I've used Content Aware Phil many times. I've used them to make thumbnails. The number of times I've... I've Because most of my, my thumbnails on the VOD channel are screenshots from stream that I then manipulate in some way. And there's a lot of times where there's like UI elements like a, a mini map and a health bar. And it's like just kind of in the corner of the thumbnail of the way I cropped it. So I'm like, okay, select that content aware fill, bam. It just drops some ugly pixels that vaguely resemble the background. And you can only tell if you looked at the thumbnail in full resolution and squinted real close. So it's fine. 
Uh, I don't have a dislike of that process. I've used it a lot. Um, but the difference is that, that I don't know how content aware was created, but it's not like the same type of machine learning. I don't know. I, all, all I thought originally, and I'm not the most technical person, so I could be wrong. I thought it was just looking at those pixels around it and just sort of making a lot of best guesses. And it frequently guesses very, very wrong. Um, and generative AI, as far as that context, would just be like, it's doing the same thing, but it's b building upon a reference, a library of references to be like, here's what's probably here. I don't really know. I don't really know. It's a mess, but... It has used to steal from people's livelihoods, what's the worst? Well, yeah. Yeah. It ain't cuts time, but in our creation, you're off. Well, yeah, it's 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 also, it's like that's a blurry line if you're using AI generation to tweak something that you already made or already exists versus generating a new piece whole cloth, which where it's much more likely to be like, yeah, this entire thing is clearly evoking a person's art who didn't consent to this. Whereas it's like, I'm removing some details and revealing a background that wasn't there. Is still like I think it's kind of cool. That's neat tech, but that's not what gets headlines with generative AI. So I don't know. Damn, that's crazy. When's the gameplay start? Welcome. <laughs> if you're new here, I usually take a while to talk to chat for a bit before I get into the game. We'll get started shortly though. Um, what if movie was Stuart Ghibli? Well, yeah, it's just yeah. My butter fingies. Yeah, it's just from others. Oh, bad arguing that it takes a job for another is any null technology ever. Right. It can be true. But that is literally every technology, so. Get your Chinese food. What we're talking about? Someone asked me about AI. Oh, yeah. I recently saw someone else talk an hour before starting the game as well. It's not just me. There's others like me. Happy Donktober. Request AI transparency. Yeah, if you use AI to generate your Donktober, just say so. Just, just be upfront about it. That's literally all I ask. Uh, that guy, thanks for the prime. Welcome. Enjoy the emotes. There's a bunch of ace. We also added, uh, what was it, Badgent to BTTV and not like Phoenix. So you don't have to be subbed. You don't even need BTTV. You'll still see it pop up in that chat, whether or not you have it. Um, I, I, I was like, I don't know if we're going to have any actual context where we use Badgent, but I might as well add it for a little bit and then see if people use it. Um, the capitalization, it's like capital N, capital P, not like Phoenix. The like is not capitalized, which does bother me, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was good. There's a lot of pretty good Ace Attorney emotes on BTTV. Um, excuse me, uh, you wanna talk about that Pinocchio movie by Spielberg? Spielberg's making a Pinocchio? What are you talking about? Also, you can if you have BTTV and you're on desktop, yeah, you can hit tab to autocomplete, which is really nice. Um, or if you hit colon, it'll make a thing pop up, and as you're typing, it'll be like, here's what we think it might be. That's nice. How many Pinocchios? Well, you know, that's the power of public domain. It's a good thing, actually. It's just, as soon as something enters public domain, it's gonna be like, I want to do my version of it, and then it'll kind of cool off. But it's still, everything should fucking go into public domain. It shouldn't take 80 life cycles to do it. Why does it be pretty poggers? People seem to like it. Uh, uh, Red Soul, thanks for 11 months. I never played or watched someone play a uh, PH game. A PH game. P Phoenix <laughs> Professor Hayton Phoenix <laughs> I don't know why I, I just what <laughs> what just made me think of uh, uh, um, Hank Hill I'll tell you what right uh, anyway thank you uh, Red Soul uh, excited to see Phoenix Wright bar attorney thank you I hope you're excited we're gonna start case four momentarily bagel tea thanks for soup Bar Appetit. Ooh! Banana. Happy Donktober. Big T. Wilson, thanks for the hammy. Catching up with these VODs at work. Been digging these playthroughs. Thanks for the good times. Thank you. Sir Dan, thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Super jobs. Thanks for 100 bits. Caught up with the VODs just in time to watch you live today. Never got to this case. So this is all new for me as well. Buckle up. If early on time chat was anything to go by, we're all in for a doozy with cases 4 and 5. Elix, thanks for 16 bits. I'm a Luddite about AI. The Luddites didn't hate the existence of technology. They rose up when it ruined their way of life and turned them into serfs for capitalists. I didn't know that about the Luddites. I just thought them I thought of them as being like hardcore Amish. 
It's like we're just we're just we're gonna we're gonna not adopt new technology. The more you know, the Luddites were based. <laughs> the Luddites were actually based, though. Hamish Court, yeah. Uh, Luddites make butter and stuff, right? That's what I thought. Uh, Carmine Gallo, thanks for the four months. Welcome back. Case four of Ace 33, my favorite of the entire trilogy. Good luck. Hope you enjoy the ride. Well, shit. We should probably get into it then, huh? Dubba, 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 bu, bu, bu. Did Katie upload the blink? It's so good. God damn it, Katie. Also, calling that emote Hawa is very good. Katie's very good. Uh, very good emotes and very good streams. Welcome back, VOD watchers who skipped me talking about AI or something. I don't know. We lost the thread. I did play a thing that I made in there somewhere. Uh, trials, tribulations, we're gonna hop back in to, to case four. It doesn't look bad when the screens are like this, but then when I switch it over here, it's like, yeah. No, there's some, there's some, hmm. Is she, is she canonically just wearing hot pants? Like, there's not even room, even, even with a, a screen gap for there to be, like, a pant or a skirt. Sorry, I call you that one time. No, 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 normalize Duncan on the streamer. Uh, she has no hips. I she doesn't have a pelvis. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's. I don't know. That's cute though. She's putting some poison in there. Turn about beginnings. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, dunk me in the milk. Got it. Yeah, exactly. I should probably remove the Maya spin before I forget. I was like, hold on, let me look back at stream. Hey, Alex, thanks for fifty bits. Before the loom, weavers worked three days a week and enjoyed comfortable, financially stable lives with plenty of room for other fulfilling activities. Then the invention of the loom commoditized their art and turned them into factory workers. But hey, rugs were cheap to make. Yeah. I do like having a lot of rugs, though. So, I guess I'm part of the problem. Bring her back! Ask me about loom. <gasps> the latest adventure game by Lucasfilm and Brian Moriarty? Featuring a, a immersive graphical interface? Tell me more. Uh, uh yeah, anyway, what are we doing? Uh, Ace Attorney trial, ca uh, turnabout beginnings. I don't know anything about, I don't know what to title the stream, because I was like, I, lo I don't know. My only assumption, because it's called turnabout beginnings, is that it's going to be with me again. I'm just, I figure it's like a, you know, another flashback case, but. Nuclear Sunset gifted a sub to Captain Kirby. And CCJJ09, thanks for eight months. Good doe, a deer, a female deer. Ray, a drop of golden Romano. Let's go. Happy Dongtober, everyone. The girl, let her go. Oh, oh, we're going way back. Is this is this Sherlock? Is that the the whatever Reichenbach Falls? Shut up! Come closer, and I kill her. See? Sorry. But you're not going to get the chance. Bang! Ah, ooh, spin! <laughs> Holy hell, that was that was gruesome. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't know it was gonna be that violent. Oh, hmm. Is Phoenix watching snuff films on his laptop? I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. I called it fugitive data. Oh my god, what is all this? Terry Falls, kidnapping murder, death penalty. Uh-huh, fugitive movements. After escaping, Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, recaptured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after escape. Yes, yeah, took place in America. Her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. Tough break. That was a whole year before me and I ever met. A year earlier, huh? Six years earlier, Mia Fey. First trial. So she's defending an escaped convict who allegedly murdered a person? Yeah, that's a little rough. February 16th, 9.24 a.m. Lobby number four. I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm going to die. I never should have accepted this case. Eek! 
The ball and chain I get. The striped jumpsuit I get. Is he wearing a battle royale collar around his neck? Is he going to explode? It's Cody from Street Fighter 4. Uh, it's just a necklace. It's his bling. Okay. Is 073D a reference something? Uh, yeah, it's the seventh game in the series, and it's in 3D. You can slide the 3D slider. I don't know. Eek! Uh, good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. I didn't do nothing. I swear I didn't kill nobody. Terry Falls, my first client. Sentenced to death five years ago, and now a prison escapee. Wait. If we've jumped back to before the first case of this game, to Mia's first case, which ended with a, her experiencing a traumatic incident that resulted in her not practicing law for eight months. Uh, okay. Prison escapee. Um, just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Yeah, so why did you escape anyway? Uh, ugh. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's eating the ball. Don't chop. Uh, I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never, I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Uh, but Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Sorry, I told a little lie. Oh boy. But anyway, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. Sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, okay. ah, I'm really, really sorry. They sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear I didn't kill her. I could never do that. He's so sad. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then about eight hours later, a policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believe that Terry Falls did it. After you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Is this the first time that she met her client? Why are we having this discussion now? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her! She was alive when I left. She was alive, it's true! I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Ha! You're not going to figure out the truth just by staring at the guy. Who could this be? <laughs> Who on earth could this? A new character just appeared. You're... Why are you here? Who is this mystery man? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. Huh. He looks familiar, but I just can't put my coffee on it. Uh, where's Mr. Grossberg? Did the hemorrhoids finally get him? Ha! That old man's probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Why are people posting barista? That's a completely unrelated emote. This can't be Godot. This guy has a face. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Armando. I didn't say. So, Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices is here for me. No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine an escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, uh, thanks. I sure wish I could get out of it, though. Ha! Relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Oh, no. Really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned the reputation as a genius since beginning his law career. Oh, no. Genius? Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours, it's go time. Prosecutor Diaper Baby, a solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice, I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. 
so he had big, dumb, wet eyes, and Mia fell for it. Got it. February 16th, 10 a.m., court room number four. The prequel to Boss. Oh, no! Court is now in session for the trial of Terry Falls, eh? The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ugh! Goo goo gaga. Prosecution. Goo goo gaga. Why was he more ornate as a baby? Why I can't believe I can't believe this man's current attire is toned down. Because Manfred von Karma. I guess so, huh? This von Karma ass coat. Youngworth. First week of the tech office vibes wearing a suit. <laughs> yeah, the prosecution's been ready for a while, Your Honor. Shit. Yeah. I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. I I yes, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth. Your Honor. So you're the new prosecutor everyone's is talking about, eh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. I'm not, I'm just gonna do the same judge voice. I can't do a good Canadian accent anyway. He's just gonna be in Midwestern. Eh? All right, buddy. At 20, Your Honor. He's drinking a, 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 a nice herbal tea. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Basically, Canadian. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. <clears throat> Did Edgeworth have a, a flawless record when we met him? I don't remember. I feel like that was a thing. That was more like man. I know Manfred was almost perfect. He did. Hmm. This is his first trial, and yes. Hmm. That bodes well for us. Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that, eh? Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day that the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. I'll create a paradox. Yeah, I don't want to do that. So we're here to, to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death. That's all we care about. You got it, kitten. Look at his smug face. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor, it was five years ago. Okay, 11 years ago now? The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. He was convicted for throwing a girl off a bridge? And then threw a policewoman off a bridge? A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. It lasted three whole days. Correct, but in the end, what finally decided the case was a certain witness's testimony. Look at him. I can't believe they, they made entirely new sprites for him. I was picturing a child in diapers sitting up on the podium, and I'm kind of, kind of bummed that's not the case. A witness's testimony. The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne. The person who confronted the criminal. Okay, so the flashback was to him getting arrested 11 years ago. That's why it was shot on film. Got it. Okay. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim into the river, who promptly did a spin as she fell. The super shit digital cams. Yeah. It was recorded at 160p, Your Honor. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That policewoman you just mentioned? That wouldn't be... Exactly. The victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Aha, I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago with only one thing on his mind to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. 
Ah, the truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. It, well, wait a minute, that's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, your honor. <laughs> he was trying to make it to his front state. Watch yourself, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice. She literally just said, Objection, can you hear out the case, sir? Fuck. Damn due process always getting in my way. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Oh, shut up, Miles. You're even younger than me, you hypocrite. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Baby Gumshoe? Is it Baby Gumshoe? It is Baby Gum. He's got a different coat. But he looks the same. Witness, state your name and occupation. Gumshoe, Dick Gumshoe. I'm the homicide detective in charge of the case, sir. I finally got promoted to the detective division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey, ma'am, you got any idea how much work it takes? What? What is it? You. You're really gorgeous. Excuse me? No, seriously. My heart, it's aching for you. He hadn't met Lobster Cop yet. Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Okay, I got it. Aw, oh, his first salary cutting. It's a momentous occasion for any young detective. Now, detective, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir, right away. His boutonniere. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That's rough. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. Autopsy? We have an autopsy report? We sure do. Stabbed with a knife in the back, died with, from blood loss between 4 and 5 p.m. Okay. Terry Falls, 25, since the death five years ago, escaped from custody two days ago. Valerie, 23. Police officer and the victim, the key witness in the case against Falls, five years ago? When she was 18? Uh, Diego, 27, a hotshot lawyer, my senior and rival at the office, a bit smug. So I thought, I thought that what happened eight months before the current, no, not the current, eight months before the first case, eight months from now, whatever. What I thought the timeline was that Mia worked her first trial and then her boyfriend was murdered or poisoned, was the one, the lawyer who was poisoned. And then she was uh, so upset by that. She was like, I can't work uh, for eight months, right? Right, so this is a year. They mean actually a year? I thought that it was just, I don't know. Because eight months, you can round it up to a year. But I just assumed that Godot was the guy who was poisoned and was her boyfriend. But this is like, no, no, her and Diego are basically co-workers. They're not, they're not a couple. Yet? Uh, no. I mean, I guess, I guess I should, I assumed that her trial that where she was the first uh, uh, attorney, the defense attorney for, I assumed that was the same exact day as um, Dahlia poisoning the guy and, and giving the necklace to Phoenix. I thought that was all the same day because that's convenient plot contrivance nonsense, but maybe maybe it's actually a few months apart. Uh, anyway, uh, Miles 20, dubbed a genius as soon as he started as a prosecutor. Today is his court debut. So he's a genius as of today? Okay. Dick Gumshoe, age 26. Homicide detective in charge of the initial investigation. Still new to his position. Yeah. Is considered supposed to clarify a timeline? Uh... Let's just, let's just move on. Uh, the court would like to hear more details about the incident itself, eh? Yes, sir. I gotcha. Okay. Let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. Did you draw this? I made it myself, guy. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old sus bridge. Gotcha. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met there on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. 
Huh. This wouldn't happen. This wouldn't happen to be the exact same bridge where he was uh, uh, accused of murdering a girl five years ago. I see. Dusky bridge map. It's my favorite Mario Kart track. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Ah. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you, I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honor. <laughs> if you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I was some hoser. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Uh, yes, sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink you for morning tea. Trust me and get ready. My God, he is drinking tea. Who is this man? His name is Stapo. Instead of good Godo. Summary of the incident. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Fowles. His name is Stop It. Thank you, Gam. I thought so. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. His name is Toe Dog. The criminal stuffed her body in his trunk, car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Uh, Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. <laughs> Naturally. Naturally, Your Honor. Now, will the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor! Cross-examination coming right up! Hey, hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. Never mind, he is drinking coffee. He's just talking about tea. Hmm. A man who drinks coffee, eh? I I'm not trembling, it's just cold in here. I'm not wearing any pants. The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right? Especially for a beginner. I don't need you to worry about me. I mean, I mean the defendants, the witness. Everyone's a beginner in here. Ha, <laughs> you got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got, kitten. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up all night watching. She was watching court videos on TikTok. She's ready for the case. Summary of the incident. He's calling her kitten and her name is Mia. It really is, it's it's like poetry. Yeah, that's why they call her Mia. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Mia. Mia, see, Mia. Uh, who was this unknown person? Maybe you knew who they were. This unknown person? You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? I was joking. The one who called, Sergeant Hawthorne, was the defendant, Terry Falls. B -b what? The defendant? Defendant called her? Meah. Meah. Known unknown. Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note. Yeah, a top secret memo that she left on her desk. It's not very top secret. No, 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 it was top secret. It was on top of the desk. Thank you, Gumshoe. Hmm. Confidential police materials written by the victim. Touch check button. February 14th, 121 p.m. Falls, 4.30 p.m. at that bridge. Wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Dahlia! Dahlia! It's probably coincidence. According to this note, it seems the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. Yeah! Whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? <laughs> Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's that detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. Hmm. 
He's so cute. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. Uh, is there a waterfalls where Mr. Falls asked to meet? A bridge up in the mountains, but why meet there? Because it's a very important place to the defendant, that's why. A VIP? What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. And the place where all of this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge. The very place where Sergeant Hawthorne arrested and handcuffed Mr. Falls. Ha! Returning to the scene of the crime, how nostalgic. Mm -hmm. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. I mean, define a brutal murder. Your Honor, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the non-existent jury, uh, can we discuss... Stabbing someone in the back isn't... An innocent man could do that, right? Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah, we were really on the ball. We found the criminal within one hour of the murder. It was great! We even got to say, don't move! We've got you surrounded! Wait a second. Isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. So how did they find out about the crime so quickly? Sergeant Hawthorne must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? Huh. <laughs> if that's what had happened, then she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call for Mr. Falls, but... She left a note on her desk about it. If only I'd noticed it earlier, maybe she'd still be alive. We have surrounded. You know, that's fair. I, I always thought of the metaphor as like, like, I'm over here and chat's over there, but maybe I'm here and chat's just 360 around me. That's a terrifying thought, thank you. Why didn't she mention the phone call to anyone? I only have 12 cups of coffee. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Yeah, they're spinning. Mr. Falls had a car then? Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? B what you mean the defendant drove his own car? No, 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 of course not. It, it was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm, car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. Is that illegal? Maybe that's cool. Never mind. He's innocent. Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the, of the stolen car's trunk. Uh-huh. Naturally, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Whoa, that's... That doesn't look too comfortable. I'm glad this judge is as smart as our judge. Crime photo adds to the court record. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about Canada, eh? The victim, she was stabbed in the back, correct? Just a little heapy, yeah. Ha! For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. You can't tell from this photo, but the knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange, do you? Anyway. <laughs> uh... Maybe the, um... Well, you know, maybe the, um... What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing? I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, we know he stole a car. It's just what he always says, Your Honor. And then he always says... Uh, sorry. I told a little lie. Or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. So how did you know to set up a police... Is there always a checkpoint? That certainly is some impressive police work. Because I didn't do nothing. Well, no, actually, it was way too close for comfort. We set up that checkpoint just after 5 p.m. The body was killed between 4 and 5. Alright. We figured that Mr. Falls might try to run. 
What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30. And it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm. That was kind of close. Any later, Mr. Falls could have slipped by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A trap? Walk into it carelessly and it'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not! Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you better get some more information. And if you're gonna get caught in a trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The ever famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. Uh huh. Hmm. Is there so wait. I think I got something. Maybe. It's only a little something, but maybe it's a something. I don't see anything strange, do you? Um Uh what do I present the crime photo? Hiya! I see something funny about the photo. Never mind, though. I guess I'm wrong about it. Wait, let me try another approach. We don't have a problem, but we do have a penalty. Oh. Thank you. There wasn't a problem. Could he just let it slide? Uh, what if I present the note? Attention. That's why. Okay. I thought it was going to be a point out in the thing on the image. This makes sense, though. Witness! But what is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I'm sorry, I totally forgot what I was gonna say. Th this is the first time I've ever had to actually address someone like that. Yeah, you should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Hm. Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. How old is Mia here? Old enough to be a lawyer. Come on, Mia, shake it off. You're a lawyer. Detective! Y yes, ma'am. This photo. She's 21. Diego's 57. He's not 57. He's 27. You said there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I said. Well, then, I suggest you take another look at the notes written by the victim. Now the note. It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. That's why I presented the photo, because I thought I was going to be like, there's something wrong with the photo, and then you could be like, there's no scarf, but, no, you know. We got it. Hi, Kelly. Uh, oh. 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 Phoenix right Battle Royale right. Oh, no. Death feels like 57. Mm-hmm. 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 Thank you, Killing. There's a lot in here. <laughs> Good. Phoenix Sprite. That's what it is. Uh, whoop. Wrong thing. And uh, whoop. Right thing. Okay. Huh? That's Edge in the corner. It very clearly says white scarf. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like. Thus... This special request. Ah, I, um... I have one very simple question for you, detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it. Ah. The caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I expect she did just that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this? <sighs> I see the defense is a little lacking. Hmm. The scarf you are searching so desperately for, is it this one, perchance? Ugh, what happened to it? Where'd you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge, I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. Chat, we can't be do- we- don't say the scarf is- we can't be doing this. Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. It's the safest place I know. 
The Edgeworth wears a fanny pack? That's hot shot. That hot shot sure has a flair for the dramatic. I think there might be a little bit something other than coffee in this mug, Mia. It's not exactly white as the color requested. Oh no. Oh no. But as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. Hmm. Looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising, it was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth. He was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. Scarf. In report. Now if the attorney for the defense has finished embarrassing herself, I've only just begun to embarrass myself. Worn by the victim at the time of the incident. We don't know that. We just know he found it at Dusty Bridge. I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is all right with you, isn't it, Miss Fay? Boy, would I like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck. Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business, the prosecution moves to establish conclusively and with hard evidence that Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Falls did indeed meet on that bridge that day. Gay people can't lie. Right. Sure. It's not It's not that it's not in their nature. It's that it's physically in incompatible. These, the, their molecules explode. Further, we will show exactly what occurred there. That sounds quite promising. I can't wait to hear all about it. Uh, everything's moving at his whim. Don't forget, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. A genius, huh? Hmm. He doesn't want to kill people in court day one. Correct. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows her wearing the scarf, sir. Huh. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Hmm. Hmm. Looking at this photo. You really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. Thank you, Your Honor. It's about 40 feet drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. I don't trust that at all. Aha! A potential witness! So why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel her to testify. I'm not sure I feel about that. I don't feel good about that either. Is it Lada? Baby Lada? So as you can see, Terry Falls had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Bah, the truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Guilty. It's quite obvious he's clearly guilty. Not again, that's not fair. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? Events on Dusky Bridge. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about people being sus. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. I would like to know about the eyewitness, Gumshoe. Who is this eyewitness? She's a college student. A female college student? Is that possible? That's right. Meaning she's female and a college student, ma'am. Fe a, fe a female col- Am I hearing you correctly? A female college student, huh? She doesn't do well in front of other people, so I came to testify for her. The future is here. Maybe so, but as the attorney for the defense, I have the right to cross-examine her. Wait, wait, wait. Women are real? For the time being, we're not relying on the witness's statements. That is all. What is that supposed to mean? The prosecution has other more decisive evidence. Our case doesn't rest on the vague testimony of a female college student. A female college student, eh? It means she's female, and what? Am I having a stroke? What is this? I can't do a, I can't, yes, and, I can't do a bit. What are they all repeating this for? I, 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 what am I missing? She's female and she's a college student. I, what is this? It's called good writing. 
I, if you absolutely must hear her testimony, you'll have to give you have to give us good reason why. Grr. Please tell us about the more decisive evidence in question. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows her wearing the scarf, sir. She's female and a college student. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta press, pre uh, She was a female and a college student? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can, can I get that red back to me? Oh, hold on. Female and a college student, okay. The victim's wearing a scarf in that photo, all right. So about the witness who took this photo, what was this person doing all the way in the mountains? Well, she, you see, she was a female college student, so... I presume, being the cryptids that they are, they just live in the woods? Hmm. She was taking photos of wildflowers, apparently. There are many unusual types of flora on that mountain, Miss Faye. People in the area say it's because of the spirits that live there. Spirits? Now that you mention it, this photo, this cloudy fog-like thing, is that a ghost? I don't believe it. No, your honor, no. We had the boys down at the lab do, a, do an analysis. It came back ghostless, your honor. Damn. I was having EMF level five. Now nah, I just passed gas, your honor. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. A ghost female college student? Drizzling, huh? That's right. There was a light rain coming down. The whole place was dreary. But not as dreary as the mood that's in this courtroom right now. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I heard a chuckle. Out in the back. I sneezed. Looks like a cold front just moved in. In any case... The point is that the area was quite damp. There was even some fog. I even slipped and fell while I was on the bridge. It was really something. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Yeah. Is that part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is. He pushed the victim hard in the back, and she fell down right on her stomach. Hmm. I remember that happening once myself. It was really brutal. Are you talking about seeing someone get pushed, or were you the one getting pushed? Or does it mean you were pushed- you pushed someone down like that once? With his mind-boggling tales and the way he said, brutal, I wonder if he's Canadian. Do Canadians say brutal in a specific way? Huh? We do. Brutal's the type of dog. Bru brutal. No, we don't. Canadian profile. I. Yeah, brutal moose. A Canadian college graduate. With a D, I get. I, br br brutal. He. I, he said. He said hoser. Why are you being like? He said brutal weird. Ha. Save your nasty look for the right person. <laughs> Is she like, oh, blah. Oh, God, he's Canadian. Ah, oh. hey, hey, don't look at me. I'm not Canadian. My name is Diego Armando. I'm not Canadian. Huh? Take a look. Poor baby. The court record seems to have wet itself. What? Watch where you spill your coffee. <laughs> hey, would you look at that? Hey, I think he spiked his coffee. The court record, huh? That must have been when the scarf fell off. Wait, so... Saying he shoved the victim down from behind and stat From behind? How do you show- uh, I don't know. Diego, chill. He is fucking drunk. He's drinking an Irish coffee. Hold the coffee. Uh... It's just a mug of Jameson. Uh... So how could he have gotten behind her if they were on a slippery rope bridge? Um... That's kind of sus. Also, the autopsy report. Stab with a knife in the back. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get back to that. That must have been when the scarf fell off. A mug of warm James. Okay, now it's. He said it's warm. Now, now it sounds cozy and nice. Uh, so, in other words, there was a struggle between the criminal and the victim, huh? 
2007-ish? Was that our reaction? I don't remember that at all. Huh. It's already so unhinged, I know. No one in the Midwest pronounces T's late in words. They're always D's. Brutal, total, etc. I mean, that's true of my accent, too. It's a lot of soft T's in words. The only T we pronounce is LGBT. Legabata. It's a female college student. It's because it's a portmanteau in Japanese. Okay. And then the English localizers went... Boy, we have a lot of text to translate that doesn't make sense, so we'll just... Don't worry about it. That's what the witness said. The El Gibbities. Los Gibbities! It's f I mean, it's weird. It looks like she didn't remember about the scarf. From what she said, it sounded like a pretty violent fight, ma'am. The area was wet from rain, the bridge was probably wet too. Which would explain why the scarf was all covered in mud, but... There's something about his testimony that's still bothering me. Talk about a surprise. I had no idea there was a photo. So what do I do? You really still believe him? Mr. Crybaby, I mean. Of course I do. Hm. So the little kitten believes in fairy tales, huh? In that case, the answer is obvious. If what you believe is the truth, then that means that somewhere hidden in that testimony is a contradiction. One huge contradiction waiting to be discovered. That's your chance. The area was wet from Diego spilling his coffee. Yeah. He knocked over his mug and then just pulled a fresh mug out of his pocket, filled with liquid. Uh, there's no- uh, yeah, okay, alright, uh, uh, okay, uh, alright. Well, I think it's sus that he says she was pushed from behind. So I guess I'll try that angle. Um... Yeah, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Uh, probably the photo. Which shows him facing her. Objection? Objection? I love being wrong in this game. It always is like that brief moment where you're like, oh. It's that sinking feeling. I did good. Well, okay. The only thing out of place here is that pointer finger of yours. Wow. Take this penalty, try thinking things through again. Thank you. I present to you exhibit A? Eh? She's a female and a college. Uh, shows the number from behind the yeah, idea. Yeah. Um, oh, maybe this. Yeah, that makes more sense in terms of a contradiction. Boy, I'm two for two now with having the right idea but presenting the wrong evidence first. At the time of the crime, the rhyme was in the lime. There was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Yeah, and fog, too. Just a generally soggy atmosphere. Hmm. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the soggy atmosphere. But this is a photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk. Considering the conditions at the scene of the crime, something isn't right. Well, by all means, please enlighten us as to what isn't right. What is it about this photo of the trunk that doesn't fit with the conditions that day? Uh, just look at her, I guess? Naturally, the answer is right here! The victim's coat? As far as I can see, there's nothing strange about it. That's exactly what's strange! Remember the testimony! What were the conditions on the bridge that day? The answer is in the tiddy. It was drizzling and foggy. Dusky bridge was all wet. If the victim really had fallen down on her stomach on top of the bridge, then the front of her coat should have been covered in mud. Uh, that, that's exactly right. The other day I fell on a muddy street and my gorgeous playoff beard was befouled. Playoff beard, huh? I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean that the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honor had fallen in the shower instead of on a muddy street, his glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal league, would be wet but not muddy. The Ace Attorney expanded universe lore just got so big. The judges play hockey together. Thank you for the bits, cadet. In 1990, early 2000s, about 30 to 40 percent of students were women. Male dominated space at the time, but what else is new? 
Even even that being the case, it's it, it's not like the idea of a female college student was strange. I want that spinoff game. They play it during recess. That's why they're always so excited for recess. They pick up games of hockey. <laughs> ah, God. Uh, fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? The surface of the bridge, huh? <laughs> a real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. Neither would a real woman. Of course I can. <laughs> Here's the evidence that proves the surface of the bridge was muddy. Take that. Take that. Take it. Have a scarf. A, a playoff beard is the superstitious practice of male athletes not shaving their beards during the playoffs. Playoff beards were introduced by ice hockey players participating in the Stanley Cup uh, playoffs and are now tradition in many leagues. Fans of the professional sports teams to also grow playoff beards. The players stop shaving when his team enters the playoffs and does not shave until the team is eliminated or wins the Stanley Cup. Playoff beard real? Poutine. Poutine. Tim Hortons. Canada. The evidence is this scarf. Ah! It should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, it means the bridge was obviously covered in mud. I should have yelled French Canada, you're right. No, I can't be outwitted by this novice bimbo! Edgeworth, please. Hey, same to you, buddy! Edgeworth's got bigger bimbo energy than Mia does. Miss Faye's assertion makes perfect sense to me. I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction between the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is why is there a contradiction? Hmm? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at what the explanation in this case may be, shall we? All right, it's not like he's really giving me a choice here. Ha! You're doing a- you're doing pretty good for a little kitten. Please, you're spilling coffee everywhere. Mr. Armando! No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk, the witness's photo showing the defendant and the victim, or the witness's testimony that stated she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. It's pretty shrimple, isn't it? The false evidence. It's one of those three. That guy looks familiar. Yeah, it kinda looks like Phoenix. What you said just now, I'm not sure I like that. That wasn't me, your honor. It was the coffee aficionado over here that said it. This court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Blame it on him, your honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into the court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his evidence as a flimsy scam it really is. Yes, me and my drunk friend here are right. The false evidence in the case is the... Hmm. 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 That's some good coffee. Uh, thank you for the bits, Azumanji. This is why Mia started her own firm and never talked about her coworkers back in the first game. Yeah. It's either, uh, uh, Mr. Hemorrhoids or Mr. Coffee Aficionado. All the French Canadians. Uh, witnesses photo by the trunk witness testimony. Which one's the most sus? The photo's not sus necessarily. Well, the 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 witnesses photo. The details around her are sus because a female college student. Uh, but we, we just we don't know anything about the circumstances. Also, how you accidentally take a photo of two people meeting on a bridge in the rain. Uh, one who's clearly an escaped convict. Um, but. In terms of what's in the photo, it's her wearing the scarf as she was supposed to be in their meeting, right? The body in the trunk is suspicious because of the lack of mud. 
And, uh, that's probably it, basically. She's just cozy in there. And then the testimony? It has contradictions, but I don't know if it's false. I need more for Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Couldn't take Kitten anymore and slash them? Hmm. My word, Diego, this is coffee's going straight to my hemorrhoids. Yeah, nope. I'm gonna try the body in the trunk. If the victim really did try to repel her killer, and if she did fall down on the bridge, then you would expect her coat to be dirty. Therefore, the body that was found in the trunk of the car, it was not the body of Valerie Hawthorne. What do you have to say to that, Mr. Edgeworth? <sighs> Objection. Pull a gusto into it, Edgeworth. Not only a whisper, but he mixed in a sigh, too. Valerie Hawthorne was more than a simple meter maid, she was a sergeant. She's absolutely- there's absolutely no chance that a mistake about her identity could be made. I wasn't saying that that wasn't Valerie, I was saying that, like, there's other... ...details around that photo that make it sus. Like, either it was taken... ...earlier, or... There's some kind of foul play. I'm not saying it wasn't her. I guess he's right. From this point on, Miss Faye, I will penalize you for making unsubstantiated accusations. Don't do it, Mia. Don't cry until you get home. In any case, the court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence. Blame it on him. Okay. Then the photo is fake. About the photo that the prosecution claims was taken by a witness. It certainly seems to show a man in a prison uniform and a woman in a coat. However, we can't tell any more than that from the photo. Are you saying the people in the photo may not be the victim and the defendant? That's certainly a possibility. So perhaps it was another prisoner and policewoman. I admit people have their quirks. Perhaps they were part of a role-playing group. I suppose that's also possible, I guess. You messed up again, kitten. Mr. Armando! There should be something else that's even more sus. Now think the whole thing over again. From this point on, Miss Fay will penalize you. It, from this point on, but not now? Okay. Rad. I, okay, the testimony's fake? It's a no-brainer. Because I don't have a brain. Obviously, the witness is sus. During his earlier testimony, that detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witness told us. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Hmm. That's true. Ha! It's not just true, it's the truth. If there was a truly decisive witness in this case, I'm certain that boy wonder over there would have called them in the first place. Your Honor, the defense requests to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. You should brace yourself. Please don't be Lada. For the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well. Please bring forth your female college student witness at this time. What Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? He didn't say that in a Canadian accent at all. Now let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons... The woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Witness, what is your name and occupation? Uh... 
This makes way more sense than it being Lada. Everyone is so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter. Hmm. Oh. When I look at you, how can I put it? You look as scrumptious as a double-double and a dozen donut holes. I feel like I want to hurry up and hand out a verdict just to have a bite. Not so fast? As I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You are a true gentleman. Miss Fay, you could learn a lot from this man. If he's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one to me. Um, sir? Hmm? Uh, yes, my dear? This is my first time, so I'm sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. Hee <laughs> hee. Uh, not at all. It's no trouble at all. Now then. May we please have your name and occupation? My name is, um, Melissa Foster? Oh, she looked like someone else. Never mind. I am a college student. Uh, a female college student. A, a freshman in the literature department. You were on the scene when the unfortunate event occurred, correct? And you were the one who took this photo? Is that accurate? Bananas Foster? It's not that name. That's not my name. A female college student? How can you be so mean? Now see here, what are you doing shoving that in her face like that? Nice to meet you. <laughs> but it's not a photograph. It's not like it's something dangerous. It's just a f it's Next time I'll be forced to penalize you. I don't like the turn this is taken. Is she staring at me? Um... And you would be? Huh? I'm the defense lawyer. My name is Mia Fey. I see. So you are... Huh? Now then, young lady, could you please give us your testimony? Yes, your honor. I'll do my best. Hee hoo hee hoo. What was that, a boot? Her wanting to kill Mia's boyfriend in a few months' time? I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Then I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly, they just started fighting. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. Y but you didn't. You took a photo of him standing there menacingly, not actually stabbing her. And right after that, I called the police. Okay. Hmm. By the way, where were you standing when the incident occurred? I believe the map would be of help here. Um, I was standing right over here. God damn it! Fuck! Son of a bitch! Alright. <clears throat> I When I saw this, I was like, oh, she's gonna be standing on top of that overlook. No, no, no! She's standing in the place where uh, she didn't have crucial viewing angles. Of a huge amount of what was to the left. It's time for some turtle math. It's time for some goddamn turtle math. Fuck. I'm mad about it. They picked the one place <laughs> that's gonna fuck everything up. I don't even know how or why yet. I'm just already mad about it. I was standing here. Speaking of turtle math, on Gam's stream yesterday, he spawned in a new turtle on his overlay every time someone gifted a sub for September. And there were so many goddamn turkles. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was a beautiful sight to see. Uh, it was good. And then we got the big, that's true. The 69th turkle became really, really big. It was, I was standing in a beautiful field surrounded by tall cliffs. And then some of them were spinning. That was a turkle from Star Wars Jedi, uh, whatever the game's called. The other one. Do Quaternions help us? Quaternions always help us. Survivor, right. Jedi Survivor, it's the thrill of the fight. 
It's Richard Horvitz's space frog. His name is Turgal. So you took the photo from that location, eh? I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Edgeworth asked me to. Ho, 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 what a cute camera. Just like its owner. Allow me to say very weird things about your camera. Go ahead, sir. All right then, Miss Faye, time for your cross-examination. But I warn you, make the witness cry again, you'll feel the wrath of my gavel. Just gonna chuck it at her. Old people. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. I'm not doing so great this case, but I am gonna save. Anyway. Yep. 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 Wildflowers, huh? What kind of flowers? Like a, like a, like a dandelion? Or like a, like a tulip? Some sort of, uh, I don't know. Rhododendron? Wild ones? How wild are we talking here, huh? Eh? A rose? Blue bonnets? Black dahlias? Did you say wildflowers? Yes, the mountain is famous for its beautiful spring wildflowers. But it's only February. Well, I, I couldn't wait for spring to come. Ho oh, ho, I know just how you feel. It's just like when I first started growing this glorious beard of mine. I just couldn't wait, so I wore a dyed blonde Santa beard until mine grew in properly. Would you mind if we got back to the facts of the case, Your Honor? Then I noticed there were two people standing up on the sus bridge. How sus was it? The suspension bridge. Is he okay? His white eyed stare spray is unsettling. It is a bit. There's something about the way they drew his eyes, which is like, uh, hmm. Is everyone gr drunk in court today? Yeah, it's February. You don't want to go to court in February sober, do you? Anyway, uh, Canadian France. French Canada. Quebec. Quebec City. On de toi, Quebec. France. Montreal. Was there anything strange about the two of them? Guess we're not in French Canada. I, I'm a bad girl, I know I am. It looked like they were having a really serious conversation up there. So I decided to watch them, like some kind of peeping Tom. No, not at all. Everyone's like that. I love watching other people fight, too. In fact, I can't get enough of it. Actually, that's why I took this job in the first place. Too much info, Your Honor. In any case, it's perfectly natural for you to have kept watching them. I didn't think we could find a judge worse than the normal judge, but... Especially dressed as they were. Thank you, Oswald. How is he even more unhinged? I, it's impressive. I, I was watching them very closely. Suddenly, they just started fighting. Oh no. Do you have any idea what they were fighting about? Eh? N no, I have no idea. Why do you ask that? Oh, I just thought that maybe you overheard what they said. Uh-oh. 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 Oh god. Oh no. I made her cry. I would never, I would never eavesdrop. I thought you just said the eavesdropped like two seconds ago. I got more class than that. That's right, Miss Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level. <laughs> That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. Why did you take a photo? Well, the two of them were really going at it. Ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a news reporter. I guess that part of me just kind of took over. It smells like a lie to me. I understand completely. Even now, I can't completely abandon my boyhood dreams. I still use my grandson to test my comedy routines on. So you wanted to be a comedian, huh? Not that it has any bearing on this. All I could do was use my... All I could do was to use my camera. So I took the photo of the crucial moment and gave it to the police. And right after that, I called the police. This man is married. Judge Fox, you called the, the police. That's his name. You called the police? Yes, because it looked to me like the murderer was going to try to escape. We were already moving before the call even came in. Thanks to the victim's notes, we had already started our operation. 
Hmm. That was certainly tough luck for the criminal, eh? If Terry Falls isn't the criminal, then there must be something strange in that girl's testimony. Be careful, kitten. That girl has the judge wrapped around her little finger. You're gonna have a tough time poking holes in that testimony of hers. You're gonna have to come up with something really good, Mia. Okay. All right. Mm. Judge Fox. Correct. Uh, but, uh, but. Um. Um. This one. Witness. When you said you took a photo of the crucial moment, is this what you meant? Uh. All I can see in this photo are two people facing each other. You testified you saw the two of them starting to fight. Normally, that's the kind of thing we would refer to as a crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? Well, you see... The photo we presented was the only one there was. But if you really wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happened next? You must have taken a photo of it. Hmm... Don't... Uh, my, apo my apologies, young lady. But Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. He loves fighting more than he likes being a creep on young girls. He can certainly downplay a situation, can't he? I'm sorry. I'm a very bad girl. I, uh, used it all up. The film, I mean. You ran out of film? This photo was the last one. What? Unfortunately, that is the truth. I personally examined all the photographs she took that day. All the other photos are of the witness herself playing among the wildflowers. The witness herself? Then who took the photos? Well, you see, my camera has a timer feature built into it. Don't ask me what film is. Jesus Christ. So you, had, you took photos of yourself? I remember taking some photos of myself once too. Please, no details. It seems that Miss Faye's assertion was not so decisive after all. Hey, what's a photo? Well, just a minute. Well, if she had no film left, she couldn't very well take more pictures, eh? Great. Miss Foster, perhaps then you could tell us about a different sort of photo. Photos of the incident that you took with your very own eyes. What's a digital camera? Why does that phone look so weird? You're quite the poet. What's a female college student? Is film like a weird name for an SD card? What's an SD card? Very well then, let's get back to the cross-examination. Let's hear your thoughts on the fight that you witnessed. Yes, Mr. Judge. Boy, this guy's really a sucker for sweet talk. <laughs> it looks like the other kitten in the room is the one that's getting all the attention. Thank you. Yeah, it's sickening. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. I noticed there were two people staying up on the suspension bridge. They started fighting. The victim turned around and tried to run away. Huh? Huh? The victim? Why do you think she tried to run away? Stop banging whiskey, Diego! Um... So he's like pouring whiskey into the mug, and then he puts the mug aside and then starts drinking from the bottle. With her police training, she certainly knew better than to turn her back on a criminal. This was a large, powerful man with a knife. If it had been a quaggy woman like you, I'm sure she would have acted differently. Quag... Quaggy. Resembling a marsh or quagmire. Boggy. He's calling her a bog? Huh. Marshy. Soft and watery. Of soil. Get bogged. <laughs> okay, okay, alright. Do pulling out the thesaurus, I guess. You girl, yo girl, you a swamp. <laughs> okay. Quaggy, why you? If it had been me, I probably would have jumped into the river. There's still something wrong with this testimony. 
She only got about 10 yards before she was stabbed in the back. So you're saying Sergeant Hawthorne wasn't able to get away from him? Well, it's a narrow bridge and it was swaying back and forth. If you ask me, both of them were in danger of falling off. I only wish I could have done something to help her. That seems to make sense. Wonder about that. Something seems kind of off. Ah, you have a good sixth sense. When you feel that something's off, that's when you need to figure out why. If Terry falls, he's just, ign <laughs> she's just ignoring him now. If Terry falls isn't the criminal, then there must be something strange in her testimony. Yep, yep, yep. All right. How about this? Um. Um. Get a load of this. Get a load of this. Get get a get a load of this. You get get Sonic. Get a load of this. Attention. Nice. Witness, your testimony is a joke. Huh? What? But, but I I just Miss Faye, I thought I warned you not to make the witness cry. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there were two contradictions? It's shrimple. Just take a look at the diagram of the area. According to her testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if they were, and the victim had turned around and tried to run, well then, she would have hit a dead end. You said 10 yards, but she couldn't have run even five. Because Dusky Bridge has collapsed on that side. Where? Why is the bridge even open? Seems like it should be just surrounded with barricades. What does all this mean? It's very simple, Your Honor. This charming little witness told a charming little lie. That's all there is to it. This beautiful young lady has been lying in the corn? Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. What do you mean? There's one major mistake in this diagram. What did you say? What are you referring to? What a gumshoe mess up with this crayon drawing of the bridge. It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. It's a very old bridge. We couldn't find any official blueprints of it. So you're saying? I'm saying that even though this bridge is currently in disrepair, there's no evidence that can prove the bridge was broken during the incident. What about the photo she took? Ah, shit! Ah, beans! Um... 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 G... But, um... When... When... What? uh... That's ridiculous! You can't actually tell the condition of the bridge from this photo. I apologize to the courts for not being more clear when I presented the evidence. Hmm... Yeah, that guy's good. Huh? What do you mean? He planted from the beginning. He's a genius, all right. Hey, that diagram of the bridge is his insurance policy. What? That coward. Well, Miss Faye, it seems you've once again made a reckless accusation. I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful myself. No, 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 no. It wasn't your fault at all. Now then, shall we go on with the trial? I'd like to establish once and for all what it was that the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. May I ask you to please proceed with your testimony? But I... It's so hard to go on. We're all on your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Just tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Running from the crime... After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked up, picked her up in his arms. Then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. Could have thrown her in the river. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Oh. Hmm. 
Witnessing such violence must have been difficult. Yes, sir. I'm still shaken up. If he accepts this testimony as it is, we're finished. Don't say that. Oh, well. Maybe I'll stop off at my favorite cafe on the way home. They make a really great mocha latte. This trial isn't over yet. Huh. That's what I like to hear. All right, Miss Faye, your cross-examination, if you please. This cafe. The contradiction is staring you right in the face, Mia. Go on the attack. Diego, no, you're gonna die. After he stabs her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. You saying he was armed? What kind of weaponry did he have? Are you saying that the victim didn't fall down on the bridge? Uh, uh, actually, maybe she did fall. Of course she didn't fall down on the bridge. If she had fallen down, this photo wouldn't make any sense. If that was the case, her coat would have been all muddy. If you don't mind, I was asking the witness. No need to be so rude. Well, young lady. Of course she didn't fall down. The man in the prison uniform grabbed her before she could. Ha! We're one step too slow. And then, what did the defendant do after that? Then he carried her over to the car. You personally witnessed that? Yes. Did anything strange happen when he did that? Well, I don't know if you'd call it strange or not, but that's when the victim's scarf fell off. Did they just cut off the, like, intense noise? You mean this scarf? Her words match what we found at the scene. I don't see any problem. Quaggy moment. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. You mean the defendant carried the body all by himself? Yes. Considering the size of the defendant, I don't think it would be difficult. Yes, but let's remember they were on a narrow bridge that was ready to collapse. Is it even possible for him to have carried a dead body on a bridge like that? Well, the, the fact of the matter is that he did. That kind of talk is just silly. Wow, why did he get so emotional all of a sudden? Miss Faye, if you think there's some other possibility, please share with the rest of us. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Why not? Why do you say that? It's already a broken down bridge hidden away in the mountains. Doing anything more to move, to hide the body? Doing anything more to hide the corpse would be going overboard, wouldn't it? Yes, but that mountain is famous among hikers. A surprising number of people go up there. But it's February, right? And it was raining that day, correct? There's also a small temple and a channeling dojo there. You know those monks, they just love cold, isolated places. I think the witness is trying to say the corpse could have been found at any time. Besides, the witness is merely reporting what she witnessed with her own eyes. Mm-hmm. Wasn't dying court for killing a man? That was five years, six years after this. No, that was next year. Not that far ahead. We went back before the first trial. Eight months or so after? No, a year? Yeah, a year. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. I was meant to press on that. Something about this testimony is bothering me, but what? Hey, kitten, have you ever put salt in your coffee? Why would I? Why not? You should probably drink some water, buddy. Huh? It may actually go better with coffee than sugar, right? Listen. My point is, if you're not sure, you might as well add a ton of salt to it. It might bring out the rust in something. Like a piece of evidence. What are you talking about? I'm glad I decided to make him drunk, because what on earth is he saying? If you add salt to the evidence, it'll bring out the rust like a piece of evidence. Okay, he's right. You go present something, you've got nothing to lose. By the way, I wouldn't put salt in my coffee. It's gonna go well after all. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it, Diego. Thank you so much. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, I suppose to... Yeah, what'd you see? What'd you see? Shut the fuck up. 
And you're absolutely certain that it was my client who was carrying the body? Well, he was wearing a prisoner's uniform, but as for his face... So you're saying you didn't get a clear look at his face? Nice. If you can put salt in coffee, if your coffee's good quality, can ruin it. But you can add salt to shit coffee? Well, they were far away and it was raining as well. I thought I was only supposed to say exactly what I saw. Excellent! You're a remarkably honest young woman. Something about this testimony is bothering me. All right. Bop, 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 bop. Alright, uh, let me just do a little savor, you know, um... We, we got, we got this. Makes it less bitter. Hmm. 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 Makes the acidity not as bad. Do it for cheap coffee. Hmm. Um... Right. He carried over to the car. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Map. Oh, hmm. Interesting. Oh, so you can see through walls, huh? You can see through dirt and cliffs. Oh, interesting. That's pretty remarkable, don't you say, Judge? Huh? Oh, you know? Oh, interesting. How is that not it? How is that not it? I was very confident about that. Great. Huh? How is that not the contradiction? There's no way she could have seen him take it to the car. She couldn't even have known there was a car there. I'm, I'm quaggy, aren't I? Uh... Has a timer function. Which she may or may not have used. Uh... uh um... Um... He picked her up in his arms. She carried her over to the car. That was the only way he could make, make sure the body stayed hidden. He could just leave the body on top of the bridge. I don't know what the fuck else I could I can press on. Hames Joffman. Sid Frenchman. Different cliff? She's female aunt of college, that's true. Um... Is there anything else that... What? What? Like this? Attention. Nope. Th it does a step. There's a fucking cliff in the photo. What? More quagged. I'm extremely quagged. I suppose it's only the mission of the body could have stayed hidden. Um, the map. Attention. It's on that line? A killer not wanting his victim to be found. I can understand that. However, the idea of moving the body for that purpose is clearly odd. There was a much easier way to make sure the body wasn't found. Where? What is it? Take another look at the map of the area and you'll see how. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier, Mr. Edgeworth pointed out something interesting about the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. Ah! In the kidnapping case five years ago, the victim's body was carried away and never found. If ten murders were to occur at that same spot above the Eagle River, you can bet your boots that every other killer would have tossed the body in the water. How many bodies have fallen off the internet finding bodies? I mean, you can determine that someone disappeared and maybe went around there around the same time. Mm. Order! I'm not sure if I care for the way you put that, Miss Faye, but I must admit it does seem odd not to have thrown the body into the river. I am I'm tempted to reload a save. Because I I did I did blow up like half my health on this. Well, Mr. Edgeworth. How sad. Perhaps Miss Faye would do well to try taking a dip in the river herself. Bro. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method of body disposal, the fact is that this is what the killer did. 
None of your arguments have anything to do with what the witness saw. Quite true. Miss Fay, it seems that your assertion is without merit after all. But what the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous! Objection. Surely you can't deny that the body was found in the trunk of the car? That's certainly consistent with what the witness has told us. Game. Please, witness, go on with your testimony. I'll try. All you have to do is tell us only what you saw. Otherwise, the mean lady might yell at you again. Who is he talking about? All right. I'll do my best. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked up and in his arms, get over to the car. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. I'm just gonna blow myself up. I'm an attorney. Your honor, I'm an attorney. Cool. That's a neat badge. Thank you. Kaboom. You lose. Extremely biased person to judge because he likes watching people fight. That's why I became a judge. Everyone's so goddamn mean to Mia. Mm-hmm. It, it, like... I get why they do it from a storytelling, like, writing perspective. Why you always are presented as the underdog. And every, every victory you get, you're just fighting against this relentless tidal wave of bullshit. Um... So what was it? Uh... As long as I could stay and make the body hit and put that on the bridge. Okay. Um, hey, Metasar, thanks for the raid. But, yeah, it's like, in this case, it's Mia's first case. And she's actually done a good job of presenting contradictions so far and getting further clarification for the details. And they're still giving her a harsh time. In Phoenix's case, they're still like, oh my god, here goes Phoenix yet again. When he has such an established track record of always getting to the truth. And despite how bullshit the circumstances were. It's just absurd. She's too cool for them. Thanks, Linolin. Uh, after watching the evidence, you were absolutely correct. Sorry for Mr. Fisher keeping the boss person in gray ally. Hey! Linolin. For watching the evidence. <laughs> appreciate you phrase. No worries! I, I, I still appreciate the, uh, you know, the thought, but I wanted to explain where I'm coming from. Because granted, if I was being stupid and was like, oh, I'm doing it like this, and the chat's like, that's not how it works. You're making it harder on yourself for no reason. Obviously, I'd rather know. So, no worries. Thank you. Totally apologetology. Mm-hmm. Don't get anyone could like Melissa more than Mia. Mm-hmm. You can only hold B to fast forward if it's dialogue you've already seen before. Unfortunately. Because I died and loaded a save, so technically I haven't seen this before in this save, so... Yeah, holding B. Doesn't do nothing. Just gotta mash through it. Did a hell switch on Tigre? And gotcha, you're correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Who's he talking about? The increased hatred of defense, one of my favorite parts of future game spoilers. Anyway. Alright, now I'll save here. I think I'll change that later. I mean, I don't mind it. At least you can fast forward any amount. It just is only. It's like, it just means you can't accidentally fast forward something you've never seen before. It just is annoying when it's like, I gotta load up a save and get through it again. Uh, he stabbed the back of his arms, carried over the car. The killer broke into the trunk and hid the body in there. And how did you see that? What did the man do then? Well, naturally, he got in the car and was about to flee. That's, that's when I came to my senses. I said to myself, you have to call the police. And so that's when you call the police. You're sure that you saw all that with your own eyes? Yes, I'm 100% certain. Well, that's interesting. So now do I throw out the map again? Hmm. Such a brave female college student. So brave. So female. So college student. Um, why would he have to break into the trunk? First of all, if he'd already stolen the car, he would have access to the driver's seat, where there's presumably a latch for the trunk. Second of all, how did you see that? Objection. Okay, nah, nah, I... It seems, I, I understand that we're, like, drilling home, like, in hindsight, 
It's going, yeah, you sure you saw all that? You saw all of it? Okay, great. No, you didn't. That plays better. But I still think I was valid for it also being a fair contradiction. Last time when she's like, it should, she should have just said like, oh, she carried, he carried her to the left. You know, something that she plausibly could have seen. Not mentioning the car. Uh, but fine. Whatever. Miss Foster. Looks like you've done it this time. Game's picky. Yeah. Done what? Made a crucial mistake. One deconstruction at a time. I mean, it blows apart her entire testimony. No matter where you throw it. A crucial mistake. Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. You're saying you saw that, right? With your very own eyes? Yes, and? I see you have improv training. It's simple, Miss Foster. Take a look at the diagram. The place you claim to have taken the photo from that day is here. Do you see what I mean? Even if you tried to see the car, this outcropping of rock is directly in the way. That's right, Miss Foster. From where you were standing, you could not have possibly seen the killer's car. She said he took the body to the car, which could be in that direction. Mr. Stage with the car directly. Right, this is a better contradiction for how did you see that, but I still... She could not have seen the car from where she was standing. She may have heard it, but that's not what she said. So, whatever. I admit the diagram shows a large outcropping of rock. However, it isn't so tall that it would stop her from seeing the car. That's right. It's not high at all. I was able to see his car just fine. I'm so sorry, but that just doesn't wash. I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the court, yes? This is the location the photo was taken from. Your own photo tells the whole story. You can clearly see the left side of the bridge, but the outcropping that is being referred to is really more like a cliff. Your view should have been completely cut off by this cliff. But still, you claim to have been able to see the killer's car. No! Get a rest! Order in the corner! What is the meaning of all this ballyhoo? Your Honor, don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact that the escapee fled in a stolen car was reported on the news. After witnessing a murder, I'm sure you can appreciate that the witness was very upset. She must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself that she saw it. But she was repeatedly warned before starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her own eyes. Mr. Judge? What is it? I think... I think I must have remembered things wrong. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just say that. Miss Faye, no one on the face of the planet is perfect. Yes, indeed. Quite true. You know what they say. To err is human, to forgive divine. That's right. I'm God! I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here. That's not fair! Oh, but he's nerfed. Save the tears for later, kid. Mr. Armando, don't look back until the trial is over. Now is the time to go forward. But that wasn't fair. Okay, kitten, you need to relax. And you need to remember the other kitten's testimony. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. So tell us, well, how, you, how did you know that? As you know, she broke into the trunk. Aha! And take can explain it how you knew that. You're gonna have a lot of very sus people on this side of the courtroom. Well, witness? Well, I'm certain that he broke into the trunk. Because there were marks left on the trunk lid. Where are they? Where are they? I see some very tasteful dithering, but... Okay. Oh. 
I'm certain there were scratch marks from when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. Oh, like around the actual keyhole. At the very, very top. Circumstantial evidence. Did those nerds. It's true. These certainly look like scratch marks around the keyhole. Mmm! It's obvious that this trunk has been broken open. Well, Miss Faye, are you satisfied? Judge is on her side. I can't make any mistakes here. What she just said, is there a contradiction in there somewhere? Yes, and Um... I mean, there's gotta be. There's gotta be. Because she's a lying little... Lying little liar. It doesn't work. Melissa Foster, it looks like you finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in a field taking photos of wildflowers. But even so, you knew about the scratches. The question is when? When did you get a chance to see those scratches? Finally, I've got her. Ha! I'm getting pretty tired of waiting over here. Then perhaps it would be faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Your Honor, there's only one possible explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was... She happened to be passing by. She put the corpse in herself. She's the owner of a large automobile. And the days go by. She put the corpse in there herself. There's only one way that the witness had the chance to see those scratches. There? What was it? Naturally. When she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in herself. The person who really hid the body in the trunk of that car... That person was you! Melissa Foster! It was you that did it, wasn't it? That's ridiculous. I could never... It was the man in the prison garb. He's the one that... I don't think so, Miss Foster. If Mr. Falls had been the one that put the corpse in the trunk, he would have simply used the car key. There was no need to break it open. But he stole the car! He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Which means that the key would have still been in the ignition. I was right. Uh, I see. Thank you for telling us about the scratches, Miss Foster. Without that, we never would have uncovered the truth. It couldn't have been Falls that put the body in the trunk. Posturous to even suggest that the witness put the body in there. How did she carry the body without it getting even a little muddy? If that were true, then how do you explain the photo that she took? The corpse could only have been put in the trunk when the incident occurred. And we already know that at the time she was taking photographs. She was also out of film after that. Now is the chance, Mia. Finish this thing. On the oh contraire, mon frere. I'm not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. Because she could have put down the timer. There's no need to think too deeply about it. Chat to me every time. What I'm saying is the shutter for this may not have been pushed by Miss Foster herself. I don't think you can make a mistake about it. Take a look at her camera. The camera is also a clock. Yeah, lithium drink, yeah. Technically, yeah. Te it has a timer built into it, even a mini tripod. The camera's full of monkeys. Hmm. Almost as if the camera was brought just to take this picture. What are you trying to say then, Miss Faye? That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field as she claimed? Well, if she really did use the camera's auto timer, then the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. Exactly. She was not in the field. Hmm. Would the defense please explain further? Well, there's, a, there's a crucial point. Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? And answering that question will also 
Make clear Miss Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer the question. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? Uh... I, I want I, I, I want to say uh, in the in the trunk not really based off of anything just because I think it'd be funny um, in the five yards maybe yeah maybe she's in the legend of the map um where on what how she was the e, she was in the what how she has to be on the left side. Okay, I, this doesn't make any sense. But I'm gonna try it anyway. She was here, I think. In the spot where the defendant's car was. Yes, she had to put the body in the trunk before the defendant's return. You don't mind if I ask one teeny weeny question, do you, Miss Faye? And he's got that condescending tone in his voice. If she put the body in the trunk at that time, as you suggest, that must mean that Valerie Hawthorne was already dead at that point, correct? Indeed. Please take a look at the top of Dusky Bridge. It certainly looks to me like the victim is still alive. Am I mistaken? <laughs> if Valerie Hawthorne was already dead, then who is this? The mountain is famous for spirits, so maybe you think it was the ghost of the victim? Ghosts aren't real! And she's like, that gives me an idea. For if I'm untimely murdered. Well, it could have been a spirit, right? Miss Faye, don't wait the Don't waste the court's time with this kind of foolishness. I still maintain the witness was in a different place at the time. I'm just gonna say before I make it worse for myself. I was thinking, like, I don't I don't know where else she could be. I still don't, but the trunk. Doesn't make sense. That's why I picked it because I'm like, if this is the answer, that was a lot of dialogue, just to be wrong. Um, how would she get in the trunk? Did she just happen to be in a trunk being of a car being driven by two people that just so happened to get stolen by Mr. Falls? It's just like way too too random. So, huh? I am certain, more or less. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? Unless... She was there! That's the other dumb answer. But that's... That's where the victim, Miss Hawthorne, was standing! I did it. I mean, I'm not cooking, it's just that's the only other possible place, and they kind of set you up with the failure text. But, how? Why? Order? What on earth? Your Honor, if I may. After parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendants fled by car. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it could only have been before the defendants met the victim. Objection. How asinine. Of course Mr. Falls met with the victim. The only person with the opportunity to have put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Falls. Objection. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Edgeworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. I've never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. Me? Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Falls himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. 
but the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped get him convicted. No, I didn't. But since then, my client has spent five hard years in a federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You're just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? I've got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow the case wide open. At the time of the incident, Mr. Fall said, For gore! It's the the note, right? Uh, yeah. Hiya! Mr. Falls had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification. Namely, this muddy scarf. I got your proof right here. Middle finger. Ah! It was Mr. Falls who requested she wear this scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by this note the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Thanks, Whitehawk. What do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? No! Ooh, she faded away. Oh. Oh no, she's too delicate. She withered away. Like a spring rose. Uh, uh... Where's Miss Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Hmm. Hmm. It's obvious that Melissa Foster did it. She hid the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. She set up the camera to snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is why is she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? She's the true criminal. Ha! Well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to compose herself before we can start again. Until then, this court is in recess. I'm gonna go play hockey. The defense and the prosecution are instructed to wait in the lobby. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Very well. The court is in recess. To be continued. Hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, I th I thought I thought we got what? How? Uh, surely there is not that much left to the case, right? Right. Right. One fourteen p.m. Uh, lobby number four. Mister Falls. Ugh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're really good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime. Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. Obstacle? Diego, you've sobered up? Yeah, I took a monster piss. Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. Oh yeah, motive. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature and she's female. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never lie. Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. That day, five years ago, I dream of it every day. But you forgot her face? Dreams aren't reliable. This picture, it reminds me everything. It reminds you of everything? No, it reminds me everything. Bridge looks the same, just like then, five years ago. Like it could fall apart, fall apart any minute. Uh-huh. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ha! Sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart any minute. It's true. I did, I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. Um, he is 25, she is 19. Five, 20-year-old and a 14-year-old? Okay. Your girlfriend? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. 
Dahlia Hawthorne, Valerie's little sister. We're it's fine. We're okay. We're good. We're good. It's good. It's fine. Everything's fine. But hmm. But hmm. 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 What are you serious? Hmm. The girl. Let her go. Oh, this makes this all the more tragic, doesn't it? Shut up. Come closer, and I kill her. Ah. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. Chapow! The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. Hmm. At first, I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but... If it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. This is better or worse. It can, they can all be bad. Wrong! No protect, sister! Valerie, betray me! Betray us! What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. All make-believe. Kidnapping, too. A make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend, my love, my teen angel. Don't like that. Uh, did he actually say my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says. Hold on a minute. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Valerie was in on it? Dahlia's family rich. Jewelry business. We get one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We send to her dad. Ask for two million dollar diamond. Tell him to make exchange on Dusty Bridge. We tell Valerie make transfer because she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket's a useful thing, all right. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman... Two million isn't easily divisible by three. Valerie, she do it for real. She shoot at me for real, me and Dahlia. Oh. Huh. Why well, use many word when a few word do trick? I was shot in arm, Dahlia, she jump in river. With the di with the two million dollars? Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me! Huh. That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the Roaring River 40 feet below. These five years, all I wonder is why? 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 Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forgot what she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. Just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth. That's all. So that's why. That's why he made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Or maybe that's the excessive amount of caffeine. Tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Oh, where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. You don't know? No, really. I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day on the bridge, Dahlia put it in backpack. Meow. Hmm. Now gone with Dahlia. Gone forever. Into Eagle River. Hmm. A bit sus, isn't it? It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now, about ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her. My sweet Dahlia. They never found her. Swallowed by river, gone. Dahlia, my teen angel. Stop saying that. Your teen angel? How old was she anyway? 
Just for it. <laughs> Here I was being like, no, 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 chat. Look, it's it's different than 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 the Dahlia we knew, who's 19. It's fine. Why? Why? 14. I guess you were robbing cradles before diamonds. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two mil. Man, oh man, angels these days. Falls, ta Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel or is she really, uh... It's time, kitten. Looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. Diamond out of court record. Oh, I found it. Straight to jail. <laughs> the training wheels come off now, Mia. You gotta strike while the iron's hot. That's one of my rules. Remember it. Yeah, okay. Hey, tempted pants. The welcome back. What I just come into? Everything's fine. It's good. Everything's good here. How are you? Welcome back. It's 1.49 p.m. Courtroom number four. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. My team lost at hockey during recess, so I'm in a very poor mood. Witness, are you feeling better? Yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best. Hmm. You're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her clients off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the same per- not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime, that's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm, it's certainly hard to imagine this woman is a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figured that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence of a motive? Uh, yes, of course, I think. You're still acting as tame as a kitten, kitten. Mr. Armando, listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Excuse me, may I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course. Mr. Judge is ready any time you like. I'd like to say something. Some people here are sus of me, right? That's why. I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true, hee hee. Hmm, I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. Looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her, click, she lights right up. Hmm. Very well then, let's hear what the witness has to say. I'm sure it's, she's just like, I did it. The end. I was out of the country until the year before last. France? Until I entered college, I'd never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago, or kidnapping a poor girl, I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm, out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow I have to tire to this case. Have a good one, Duke. Thank you for the bits, Azumanji. I can mention why Mia was punching Grossberg in case one, mainly because of all of Dahlia's manipulative BS in this case. Yeah, that makes sense. Still a bit aggressive, though. Pull back, Bubbles. She went to Tawas, Arkansas. Never seen the characters' kids before. Nope, they're all brand new. I was out of the country till the year before last. What country were you living in then? We were all living abroad. Where? But after my parents were killed... It was a brutal civil war. She had to try to make her way back home alone. I lost everything. I didn't even have any personal identification. What kind of sob story is this? What do I do? Should I press her for details? Uh, sure. Fuck it. Oh, it was the French Revolution. 
How old is she? Answer my question. I even repeat it for you. What country were you in? Your Honor, this line of questioning is childish. What country she was in and how many languages she may speak are irrelevant here. What we're here to evaluate is whether this witness has any connection to this case. I've lived abroad ever since I was a little girl. That's why I could never have known Mr. Falls or Detective Hawthorne. Yes, I think we've established that point. Yes, indeed. Well then, shall we add what you've just stated to the official testimony? Yes, please, Mr. Judge. I'm trying to remember the timeline from case one. Because she was dating the... Not Phoenix, the other guy, the guy who got killed. She was dating him for a while. Before the events of eight months before that case. Where she then started going up with Phoenix to get the necklace back. Yeah, the victim. Doug Swallow, yeah. Would she be dating him at this time? I'm just trying to figure out the whole name change situation before they explain what happened. The Tiabu, correct. Yeah. She would be. Huh. Hmm. She is a female college, it's true. My guess is just that she's been going by her name, Melissa Foster, whether or not that's her real name. Um, and that it's only when she met Phoenix that she was like, I'm just going to lie to him about my name. What's a name that comes off the top of my head? Uh, Dahlia Hawthorne. There you go. That's the name. There you go. That's who I am. And it just never came up elsewhere. I don't know. Uh, naturally, I didn't know either the victim or the defendant. She's a busy lady. You didn't know either person? Are you certain of that? I'm afraid I'm rather shy around people. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that can't be helped. Why is he just agreeing with everything that comes out of her mouth? The first time you saw either of them was when they were on the bridge, correct? Yes, it really was a coincidence. Until I entered college, I'd never even been to Eagle Mountain before. So what made you decide to go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just love being outdoors, picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. You don't look like much of a hiker to me, but you do look like a digger of sorts. Damn, Mia. But Eagle Mountain is a two-hour drive from here, and no trains run through there. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went there once with the college hiking club. I fell in love with its stark, desolate beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. Didn't know you were such a goth. By the way, what's the name of your college? The prosecution objects to any questions that involve the witness's private life. All that matters is that she's a material witness to a crime. The witness doesn't need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious in intent. Thank you. She's really gone too far. Mmm. Miss Fay, you're treading on thin ice here. I would know, what with all the hockey. I hardly said anything. Talk about sensitive. Pastel Goth. College University. I mean, literally, basically is... Yeah, CGNU. I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very sus. Not only have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. W that? Unfortunately, Miss Faye, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that at the time, an officer showed her this photo. Hmm. That seems like a rather serious mistake. <laughs> That's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. That's not fair. That wicked inmate, I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. A grudge. Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Is it? And that's precisely why he harbored such a deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. Attention. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client. He forgot what the detective looked like, right? 
It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. She's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. Press! You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Fall's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Have it add to the testimony. Your Honor! What the witness said just now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's not why I... Enough, witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. What do you mean by lucky? Well, it's February now. Everyone's wearing scarves. If I had accidentally worn a white scarf like he said, then you yourself might have been killed. Hmm, that would have been a terrible loss for this world. <laughs> Looks like you pressed too hard this time, kitten. Armando, keep looking around you and you're gonna lose sight of the finish line. Justice is blind, but she's not deaf. Sometimes you have to know when not to talk. Thanks, Diego. Are kidnapping a poor girl? I just think the defendant's a terrible, horrible monster. You knew about that incident? Weren't you out of the country until the year before last? Well, I saw a report about the escaped convict on the news. They had an in-depth report about his whole history. You were still living abroad five years ago, is that right? Yes. Can't let her get away with these lies. Listen to me, she's neck deep in this whole thing. Somehow, you're just gonna have to get her to show the court her true self. That's all we get. Hmm. 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 Ma'am. I saw the country for the before you last. This is the victim of the defendant. And then to God's never been to Eagle Mountain before. I don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Kidnapping a poor girl? I just think the defendant's a horrible monster. Mm-hmm. So the knife in the back died from blood loss between four and five. Bridge gate 40 feet above Evil Eagle River. Touch the check button for details. Uh the scarf. It is a rather blue scarf, but Hmm. Uh what is this photo? Hmm. Hmm. Do 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 Wait. I'll try throwing it at him. Uh, scarf! Scarf Jection! Witness, I want you to take a look at this photograph that you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. You are talking about this scarf right here, eh? Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. White? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Ow! Well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true the scarf doesn't look white, but there's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is... I can prove that with evidence? Uh oh. Oh oh. Oh, oh, oh Dahlia. Age deceased. 
They die so soon. Valerie's young sis, victim of the kidnap murder, fell from bridge, no body found. Uh... Yeah. Uh, hmm. Um... Yeah, um... Uh... Huh? What? What am I being dumb about? I mean, what? She was told to wear a white scarf. I'm just being quite dumb. Am I just being dumb? That's so it is. Spoilers! I can't believe it. This is the worst Valentine's Day ever. Uh, the reason we just thought the scarf was white is because... She was... It says it's white. I, I'm not... I, I guess I'm just not... I guess I'm just confused about what they want? The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white. Everyone's been saying the scarf is white. Because of this. So is it just this? Okay, I was overthinking it. It just seemed like a really weird thing to be like, hold on, show your work. And I'm like, what do you mean show your work? It's, she was told to wear a white scarf. Why would I need to prove that? Think quaggier, I guess. It just like took me for a loop. It was just, okay. All right. Have you seen this note? Note? I, uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Oh, that, okay, sure. Yeah. The point is that she wouldn't. I wonder about that. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Fall's instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for identification. White scarf? Ah! Witness, you knew what this note said. There's no other possible reason for you to mistake the scarf's color. Yeah. Well, Miss Foster. <laughs> order, 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 Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure that I've shat myself. See you later, Your Honor. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more? That's right, a person that no one would have sussed. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yep. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia? Has to be. Or is it Melissa? We're just saying it's Melissa. Because, because how else would she know that it was... Yeah, okay, yeah. Hang on there, kitten. What is it, Mr. Armando? Here, I made some special cafe con leche for you. I put in plenty of sugar. Drink it up before it gets cold. Don't be shy. Why are you doing this? Your brain needs stimulation. Drink some of this and then think it over again. Listen, keep messing up like that and you're gonna get the judge mad. I was wrong. Miss Faye, don't just stand there casually drinking coffee. Think quagier. Oops. I think it's too late. Diego sent me his poo brain. There is one more person. So, uh, read, read the note? That's not the note. That's not the note either. That is the note. Falls with that scarf. Talk to Dahlia. I sure did gloss over that part, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I'm just gonna blow myself up real quick. Just as a, just as a treat. Kaboom! I drink cafe con leche every morning. Sounds good right now. I was doing pretty good for a while there. Now the poo brain has seeped in. He's quagging. <laughs> 
don't like quagging as a verb. Your honor, permission to quag? Permission denied. Boom. The poo seepage into the brain. All right, where am I? As a country. Um. Didn't have reason why I hurt, please, officer. Uh, uh, I was lucky I was wearing a white scar. Oh, we're back here. That's fine. Attention. Yeah. Uh, how are we doing, chat? How are we doing? Everything's going great. Never say those two words. You're welcome. Let's read and check. It's catchy. It's quatchy. Just thinking about the idea of calling a woman a quagmire and what context that could ever make sense. And it's just... You know. Yeah, I appreciate the deity. You had burger? Oh, nice. Just like Maya. I miss Maya. Bum 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 bum. Let Mia say gig it. Not in this misogyny hotbed of a courtroom. Mm. Mm hmm. The reason why it's thought the scarf was white is because of the thing. Take that. Ugh. I never. Maya's just spinning? Yeah. Because what, eight years ago, Maya would have been like 11? Yeah, she's spinning. I mean, Pearl's not even born yet? Or she's like one years old? White scarf? Pearlin. Pearl's one or two. Maya's daycare? <laughs> she's in jail. <laughs> no! What are we doing? Uh, she's meditating. Mm -hmm. Order in the corner. I'm waiting. White scarf, cape, hat. I'm just listing nouns now. We just knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. There falls is one. The person who wrote the note. The Valley Hawthorne is another. And finally, one more person. One more person? I know the answer now because I'm dumb, but... I was thinking, like, maybe it was Dahlia, and I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. It was clearly Melissa. And then I'm like, oh, no, I was. I was right. The third person. That person was you. Dahlia. And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her name right there. What's this? Who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne? Hmm... Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The dead? I thought you said there weren't any ghosts in this photo! Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped. And killed by Terry Falls. Imagine bringing the dead back to court and bringing the brand back to life in court. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago, when she fell off of Dusky Bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. That's her right there. She's right there. She's just pointing. From the gallery, just leaning over and pointing. She was declared legally dead five years ago. And if you're legally dead, you're definitely really, really dead. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne's officially dead. But the fact remains her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster. I believe that's the same age you are. <laughs> Even you couldn't, Miss Faye. You're not saying. What I am. It's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. 
This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Heh, <laughs> <laughs> nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit and run arsonist. I understand? If I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now's my chance to make Edgeworth squirm. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Witness? Just who are you anyway? I. I'm. I didn't think it'd come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, witness. Yes, I understand. But, but, Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't, you don't mean? Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Ha! <laughs> Looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? If he hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't gonna say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. So you know this guy that's on death row and has been in prison for five years? Uh... uh, uh but I thought she died five years... Legally dead! A g g g ghost We thought so as well. But, well, as you can see... Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute! For the last five years, she's been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting susly at another murder scene! Objection. You sus. Really, Miss Fay, your strategy is clearly obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you! Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. But even worse than that, five years later... Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious. Her big sister. Miss Fay must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Fay, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see... I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Ha! <laughs> I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. We are? Uh, that wasn't me, it was this guy, the crazy coffee addict. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. <laughs> what makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Ah, I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You've just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me. The rashness of youth, how charming. This is coming from someone younger than me. Now then, let's not waste any more time, Miss Fay. Yeah, what's up? How you doing? I'm just gonna... Uh, uh, um, the gems. You see the di- She carved her name. And her plan. Okay, good timing on that. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? Uh, the diamond? The, the diamond. Um. Yeah, um. Uh, um. The, the diamond?
What is this? Is this the defense's idea of a joke? If so, I certainly don't get the punchline. Well, Miss Faye? Oh, that was... The rashness of youth! The rashness of youth? And what is your point in furthering such a stereotype? That wouldn't have stayed hidden for five years, kitten. There must be a good reason for that. And somehow it must involve Valerie Hawthorne. Okay, one more time. You gotta read the court record more carefully. Now then, let's not waste any more time. What motive did she have for moitering her own sister? Um. Um. I, well, yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold on. I'm just. Hold on. Um. The whole truth must come out. Uh huh. Yep. Yep, sure. Sure thing. Yep. Okay. Uh huh. This is definitely just gonna be two days ago. He went into the case against Falls five years ago. This is it just that? Right. Uh, the rashness of you? The ra probably the rashness of youth. It's a new art exhibit I'm opening up called the rashness of youth. Guilt dent. Hooray! Yay! Hooray! Yay! Yay! Hooray! I love a happy ending, don't you? That's why we're all here. Uh, okay. What motive does she have for murdering her sister? So the, the three, they, she got betrayed. There were three of them had a plan. And then the plan was that they would fake a kidnapping and then steal the diamonds and be like, hooray, now we can split in. We all, we all basically got money. Hooray, awesome. At some point, Valerie's like, I've changed the plan and fired real bullets? Because uh, uh, our client claims he was shot, that he his arm got hit. So she wasn't firing blanks from the sounds of it. She actually was shooting. And then she took the diamond and jumped into the river. What? What, chat? What? 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 Don't just say my name. What? It's frustrating if you just say my name. What am I wrong about? What do you mean? Just what? <laughs> hey, chat. What's up? Well, how can I help you, chat? What What do you need? What do you need? <laughs> I'm trying to work my way through what I thought happened. So it sounds like I'm wrong about something. If that's the case, I'd like to know. But if you just say my name, that doesn't tell me anything. It just makes me flabbergasted. Uh, uh, uh. That was my understanding of what happened five years ago. Is that what's his face? Terry? Is his name Terry? Terry was like, she betrayed us. N nay, I say stabbed us in the back. So if that's what happened then that's a valid reason for wanting payback, I guess? Though I don't know why it needed five years or why it happened now and I still don't know how that's in the court record. Goes betrayed Terry together. If she was in on it, but if Valerie was shooting at the both of them, then that's, that doesn't sound like she was in on it with her. So unless I'm meant to just throw Terry at, at them and be like, hey, look, he's on death row. And I'm mad about that. Let's try this. Take that. Nope, that's also wrong. Hmm. The rashness of you. The rashness of you. Stayed hidden for five years. It must involve Valerie. Yeah. What am I missing? Mm-hmm. 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 
Yep, I'm an attorney. On top support, stabbed in the back, just like what happened to us five years ago, sister. Bridge located 40 feet above you. River, the scarf, the photo. Mm hmm. Victim's note. Talk to Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Which, that, that makes it seem like they've been in contact. Like, uh, not only obviously does Dahlia know that Dahl Dahlia survived, but that they've been... But then why would she leave a note in the, in the police department saying, talk to Dahlia? And then the police jumped on that and like... Not everyone knew Dahlia lived, right? So what on earth did they do? Hmm. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Did I try throwing Valerie up there? That's not really motive, that's just who she is. Yeah, I think I'm stupid. Hey, chat. What if I'm just stupid? You think about that? Missing the forest for the trees. Teeny hint. Yeah, sure. Yeah, throw it at me. She want to revenge? Why wait five years? I don't know. Figure it out. I gotta go to bed. Thanks for the hydrate. Missing the chips for the potato. It's not a person profile. Okay. That was the hint. Okay. Well, if it's one of the things that I have, then uh, I'm an attorney. Check this out. Her motive is in one of these? She didn't want the truth to come out. So she killed her to keep it a secret. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm an attorney. Check this out. Check this out. What do you think about that? I, I guess, I guess I hadn't thought of for whatever. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, all right. I'm having a thought. All right. Uh, anyway. Hooray. A happy ending once again. No, I, I deliberately blew up to get some health back. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I was thinking of it more from Valerie's perspective than Dahlia's. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh... <laughs> Hiya! The story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. The whole truth? Also, the way it was phrased of like, why did she wait five years? Made it seem like either she was planning something for five years or something that only just happened happened within that span of time it's like no she was fine with it lasting forever whatever the whole truth there was a dangerously important secret between valerie and dahlia that's the reason dahlia felt she had to kill valerie to keep her mouth shut permanently a terrific story miss fay if you like fiction that is enlighten the court miss fay what was this secret that was so important Where's your evidence? Dolly and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh yes, I know this secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things. Such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Good. Good. Very well. I'll grant your request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful for you, but can it, yeah, but can enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf? Yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. 
Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia. But this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. Five years ago. This is such a good emote, Katie. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister, Valerie, brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And were to believe, after all that, she murdered her sister? Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Fang? Yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. Yeah. <laughs> if we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up. We've still got that info, uh, that ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you forgot already. Yeah, I forgot everything all the time. The fact that the kidnapping was staged. Oh yeah, that's right. It was a fake kidnapping. Terry told us that in the lobby. I do anything she says, anything Dahlia says. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by, yeah, me and Dahlia, and Valerie too. Yes, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. Five years ago. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Fowles. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The fake napping. No, the napping was real. She really did take a nice afternoon siesta. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. Did you and Mr. Falls have a relationship? Yes, as a tutor. You were tutoring him, Mr. Falls? Uh, no, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Falls came to the house to tutor me. That makes sense. Five years ago, she was only 14. He probably came up with the kidnapping plan during that time. The Hawthorns are in the jewelry trade and are quite wealthy, you see. Hmm, quite a clever fellow, that Mr. Falls. Did I hear him right? Did he just call Mr. Falls a clever fellow? That smart feller. He felt smart. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister, Valerie, brought it to the bridge. Falls tutor on how speak good. I heard the diamond is valued in the neighborhood of $2 million. $2 million? It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a pint of milk. A very precise... That's the... the the first place I go to when I'm gauging the size of things. This is milk. Mmm! Like a bag of milk, Your Honor. A two million bag of milk. I don't know what to think about that. The defendant demanded that her sister, Valerie, make the exchange. Is bag milk sold by the pint? Yeah. Yeah, but how much is it in milk? 0 0.001 football fields. It's sold in liters. <laughs> liters! A bag of milk in as a, as a leader. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. Leaders, bro! By the way, I want to ask you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why do you think you wanted to make the exchange up there on that mountain? If you ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. In a place like that, it would be easy to tell if he was being followed. With only one entrance to the mountain, he was ensuring his safety. What a wickedly clever man that Mr. Falls is. You're yeah, right. It was all your plan. Anyway, Valerie brought the diamond to the mountain and... After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. Shot through the arm and you're too late. You give Falls a bad name. It. France. Canada. French Canada. Bag of milk. Sold by the leader. That was a dangerous thing to do, considering you were being held hostage. Yes, but actually, that saved my life. 
What do you mean? You see, Mr. Falls was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow, I just knew he was going to use it. I knew he was going to use that knife to kill me. That's why my sister shot him. It was to save me. That's when he tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, when Mr. Falls was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. I was dazed. I turned to try and run away, but Mr. Falls turned to grab me as well. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, and he gave me a large bloodthirsty grin. Bloodthirsty grin? <laughs> and in the next instant... Whee! Sploosh. I advise the court to remember that the river is 18 feet deep and incredibly swift. Any Swifties in the house? It was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I'd been carried away by the river to a strange place. I'll never forget that day. The crumbling bridge, nowhere to run. And just one little shove from behind, that was it. Before my sister could catch me, I fell into the river. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. Yeah, she got isekai And that's why you hid your identity? Yes. I only told my sister. Valerie Hawthorne, eh? Yes, she's the only one who knew about me. Meanwhile, legally, this witness has been deceased for five years. I didn't ever want something like that to happen to me again. I decided to change my identity and start a new life. I died. However, I lived. And that new identity was Melissa Foster, right? Yes, my sister helped me get the official paperwork taken care of. That makes sense. Without an insider's help, doing all the paperwork would have been impossible. She was the only person left in the world I could count on. And you, you think I killed her? There's no way I could. Hmm. It's the moment of truth for this witness, too. Once the truth about this stage kidnapping comes out, Everyone in the court will know how much of a Jezebel she really is. I've just got to prove that kidnapping was a hoax. And how do I prove that? How do I prove that? How do I prove that a thing happened differently? Uh, uh, but, 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 do I have evidence to state to the contradictory, uh, hmm, ha, hoo, hoo, ha. Harsh but true. Um... Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot him in the arm. That's when Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. And how did he do that? I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again by my family's money. I decided to change my identity, start a new life. Um, is it just the same? Is this the same problem? Is this the, the bridge problem? From behind would mean that he turned his back to Valerie with the gun. So... Nuh-uh, your honor? Nuh-uh. No, I don't think so. You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. But it's true. I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls! I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said that's hard to believe. I should have said that's impossible. Uncrustable even. Impossible? I asked the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge now and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in these last five years. Public infrastructure, am I right? If someone has pushed you from behind as you have claimed... Instead of being carried away by the river? I don't even think about that part. You would have been smashed by the bedrock below. A most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Once, how, 
increment the counter. Number of times have been right for the wrong reason. Your honor, this event occurred five years ago. Nice. There's limits. For all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. Okay. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. This case, whole series, both. You're right. If the events occurred just as the witness had testified, the defendants couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Ooh, I, uh, eto, but you see. Just a moment, your honor. It's true the witness testified the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. You know, like MGS3. If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, it's Mr. Edgeworth's explanation, correct? Now that you mention it, dot, 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 I do remember now, when I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. Order in the court. It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. CQC. Not now, Mia. This is no time for cheat. CQC, close quarters contradictions. Thanks, Maxter. Well done. Enjoy Kiwiki. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. Right? I'm putting assault in my coffee. Right? Right, Diego? He's just asleep, collapsed on the podium. Huh? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. Once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. It does? Um... Yeah, um... Oh. Yeah, that's... That's pretty high up. Them wires. That's that. That's a that's a hell of an up and over. Uh, hey, yeah. Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photograph. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. No! But let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. False said, Kobe. False said, so long, Gay Bowser. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. False had been shot in the right arm. And more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. Good. So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge, that's clearly impossible. Gwah! Order, order, what is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is the... Is there a tiger in the courtroom? Indeed, what do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had her gun in handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. El Tigre? Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could handle the swift current. But even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. And I'll tell you what that reason is, Your Honor. I just got... Hold on. Hold on, once, Your Honor. I'm gonna tell you. Hold on. Yep. Yep. Hold on. Keep keep the music playing. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll t yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, then what was it? What was so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. The fact alone explains everything. 
This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of the Eagle River. That is a lot of damage. I'm assuming the ju she dropped the diamond? Someone dropped it in the, ri in the river. Take diamond? Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her, the $2 million diamond. Diamonds are a girl's best friend and diamonds can be exchanged for money and women do be doing the shopping. It all checks out. It can't be. Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The $2 million. She was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river. With the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Yeah, she didn't know to drop it. She had it. Oh! That's simply ridiculous! How would she be able to exchange it? You know, just... Be like, I found it. Five years ago, the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon. <laughs> and there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister Dahlia. And then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. He <laughs> he. Who is that? Laughing at a time like this? Forgive me, it's just hilarious. Wet witness? Is that you? You amuse me, woman. Miss Mia Fett. Ah. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally, you have the evidence to back it up, don't you? Evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence to at least show that. Hmm, well, Miss Ray. I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Fay. Are you stupid or something? Yes, ma'am. Do you know who the author of this game is? Everyone's stupid. How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I am forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. Is this it? Is it really over? That girl has made a fool of me and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Without evidence, the trial is over? Who decided that? Mr. Armando! Come on now, kitten. Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? That's how the law works? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. Testimony? On the day in question, Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. Falls' stolen automobile and then wanted to meet with him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne, 
That's what you think, right? Yeah, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who's the one person who can testify to that demon woman's crimes? My buddy, Terry. Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness? Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant? There's only one person that can shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne. Or whether it was in fact her younger sister Dahlia disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. And that person is Terry Falls. Phoenix Wright. Master Edgeworth, what's your take on this? Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. He's so uncorrupt. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? Um, I don't believe it, no way. Dahlia died five years ago. Valerie betrayed me. Mr. Falls, I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dolly is very much alive, and you were used for two million dollars. That's not true. Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie, or was it Dahlia? Dahlia, Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised. She promised never, ever betray each other. Terry? Dahlia! It's true! You are alive! You are alive! You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth! The real truth! I believed in you! I shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. But there is one thing that I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. Hee hee. Nah, leave ya. I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Witness. Gah! Eek! I I'm sorry, I apologize. Water, please. Water. Hmm? Can't talk. Need water. <laughs> oh well, I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitterer than hell itself. Okay. Thanks for the hydrate. Throw it at his head. <laughs> that day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of Bridge. I wonder who is him. What do you mean? He's Diego. He's just a cool guy. She wasn't there, so I waited on bridge. I watched my car from bridge. I never put nobody in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked. Then she left. That was... That was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. Hmm. What's the content warning command? I don't think we have one for this game, because I don't think we needed it. Are things about to get heavy? <laughs> do, do, do we need it back? Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. There should be one? Okay. All right. Hey, chat, this might suck soon, <laughs> apparently. That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. This might suck a lot soon, yes. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I I'd, I only want a content warning if I know what's coming. I mean, I don't even know. Someone needs to know. I'd rather be specific and be like, here's what's coming up, than just have a generic warning that people can use at any time, you know what I mean? So, so I got rid of it from before. Uh, okay, well, content warning check. This might suck. Well then, Miss Faye, please proceed with your cross-examination. Is this how you want it to end, Mr. Falls? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence? There's only one person who can stop it, you kitten. 
I think. Thanks for the coffee dance. Who Terry Falls saw? Uh, saw. Who he see? Turn about trauma. That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of bridge. According to this, n to the note, the meeting was supposed to take place at 4:30. You certainly arrived early, didn't you? It was raining, already dark too. You waited on the bridge for 30 minutes. Mr. Falls, Eagle Mountain, that spot, strong, strong memories. Why'd he just clam up? Could it be he's hiding something here? About when he got there, or just what he spent the time doing? She wasn't there, so I waited on bridge. Hmm. Yeah, feel free, you can message Shiv. You were quite early, so you waited on the bridge, correct? Yeah, I like waiting. I'm used to it. I'm sure he is. Zebra Boy waited five years to ask a single question. To find out why a woman betrayed him. To him, 30 minutes must have been like a blink of an eye. I watched my car from bridge. I never put no body in that car. Uh, yes, yeah, Shiv, if you need an update. Gotcha. The picture of suicide. Thank you. You are watching the car. That bridge. Other side is broken. Nobody can come from there. So I was watching car. Uh, what else were you expecting him to do? I suppose that's the obvious thing to do, but... Something's bothering me. I'm getting that feeling. A contradiction? I wonder what's on the other side of the broken bridge anyway. No one lives there. There's a small shrine up on the mountain, but that's it. Nobody came, no car, nothing. One woman came, she stood in front of me. There's a car from the bridge. Right. So he got there first, but in the photo, yeah, she's on the other side of the bridge. Hmm. Weird. Watch my car on the bridge and I put no body in the car. Um. One woman came, she stood in front of me. One woman jump scare. Mr. Falls, think carefully now. Are you certain that it was Valerie Hawthorne? Uh, uh, I never lie. It's the truth. It was Valerie. I remembered her face. Wait a minute. If you had remembered her face, then why did you make her wear a scarf as identification? Uh, sorry, I told a little lie. But the woman I met, she was different from woman standing here now. She was different. It was Valerie. We talked, then she left. What'd you talk about? What did you talk to her about anyway? Mr. Falls. Valerie told the truth about the kidnapping five years ago. She said someone needed to take the blame for it. That was all I could think to do. She said that. That's why she lied. Got me the death penalty. And were you satisfied with that answer, witness? Dahlia died. It was my fault. But I don't really remember. Maybe I did. Maybe I did push her in. It don't matter no more. Either way, my Dahlia, my sweet teenage are dead. But you just saw that she isn't dead. After Valerie talked to me on bridge, nothing left to live for. That was Valerie, not my Dahlia. How can you be so sure? It was raining at the time, and sunset that day was at 5 o'clock. It would have already been pretty dark on the mountain at 4.30. Please, Mr. Falls, this is your last chance. You've already taken the fall once for something you didn't do. That woman. It wasn't Dahlia. Stop right there. What more needs to be said? Hmm. Even if it means the death penalty, even if it means taking the blame for murder, you'll still do whatever is necessary to protect her, won't you, Mr. Falls? I know it's obvious, but he's clearly lying. He's been cursed by Dahlia Hawthorne. He'll probably go to his grave still believing in her, Mr. Falls. Even if you can't show he's lying, the poor guy will still be cursed. You'll still have to point out the, con the contradiction anyway. That's the curse of being a defense lawyer, I guess. His eyes are shimmering. Um, okay. Alright.
Uh, well... Am I throwing the map of the bridge at someone for like the 80th time in this trial? Is that really the right answer? Um... Okay, she stood in front of me. We talked, then she left. I guess uh, it'd be more the photo than the... Yeah. She stood in front of me. Hiya! Yeah, 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 take, go, 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 gadget, objection. Objection! So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge. You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Right, well then, I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying! Boom, drop the mic. Huh? Uh, what? Wait, wait, wait. We. You made him cry. <laughs> I would love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photograph. It's perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge, right? But that's the vi- What happens? <laughs> just like, beep, poof, and just like, cut, cut. That's the victim at the end of the bridge. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. Um, Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. I got there around four o'clock, it's true. I had somewhere to go, a special place. Did you go to the special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, it's an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under the base of tree there. It's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I want to get. Fucking damn it. The vial with the poison? With Cusco's poison? Son of a- This little bottle on a necklace is your memento? It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at four o'clock, but he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. Yeah. With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. No! Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. Er huh? Mr. Falls? Oh. 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 That's enough, please. Witness? I promised her five years ago. If it ever happens that we can't trust each other no more, then we're supposed to drink bottle. Ugh. No, stop the trial. Your honor, we need a recess. Quick to the swings. I was stupid, couldn't keep promise. So I did it, I drank this. No, we're so close. Just a little more. I was gonna prove your innocence. No, don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls! Mr. Armando. Thanks for the coffee. Mr. Falls! Their death bottle. Shit. Damn. Oh man, they even have custom art for that. Hmm. And so my first trial ended. <laughs> you know, you know, I knew it ended with something horrible, but I, I, you know, didn't see that coming. Even when he was like, here's this, th this necklace, and I was like, oh, the poison necklace. And even with chat being like, hey, we need a content warning, I didn't, I didn't and put that together. Edgeworth considered this a win, by the way. Edgeworth's just like, sweet, my first case. 
do do do. Goes back to his office, hangs up his jacket. Do do do. I win. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Mhm. Mm we take those, and so my first trial ended suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. Except for Miles, who was Fortnite dancing on the other side of the courtroom. He's just doing orange justice. I ended up with a wound that cut so deep into my soul I thought it'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. And this is why the defendant should probably not be allowed to carry vials of poison on their person when they're on the stand. But one person, the truth, the true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne, she left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. You didn't win. Neener, neener, neener. Gotcha. Unforgivable, that witch. Mr. Armando! We were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're gonna make my coffee all salty. I knew it. I knew I wasn't cut out for this. Thanks for the bits. Mia? That's weird. Why? Weird that they reuse Godot's theme for him. Don't you get it? He can't cry yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> the only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. What the fuck? Dude, how much coffee did you drink? A hundred and six cups? Why? Bro! Cut down on the coffee! Why? Jesus Christ! Holy shit! Oh my god! Mr. Armando! Why do you think I wore a red shirt to court today? I have memories. No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time. Like tears in rain. Then you file them away and eventually for gore. Yeah. They went out insane on this case. They sure did. One year later in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. Bzap. No! I did not! Yeah. I remember. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty. Of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. Yeah, it was fucked up. It was finally all over. At least that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. Case five is it case five? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Brand new episode. Bridge to the Bridge Bridge to the Turnip <laughs> uh, Is he in the hospital? I don't really know what's going on there. Okay. Oh oh shit. Look at him look at him. <laughs> Okay, he looks good. He looks good. He's fine. He's fine. Take it to the bridge. Mm-hmm. God damn it. We love our short king. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Let's start bridge to the turn. We got time. We can probably do the first part of this. That, that, that was, n I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. But. Yeah, that was that was a wild case, huh? That was some shit. And now it's for the time for the final case. Can I please share what I mean by the last case? I'm waiting with it since the start of the game. Yeah, all right. Thanks for the soups and the hydrate. Um.
This is the only meme I'm gonna look at. The rest you can just toss on the Discord. Yeah, there you go. And also, you should be checking the Dongtober channel in the Discord. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I can fix her. Her crimes possession, mass murder, perjury, ma malefic. No, oh, malefic? Theft, stage kidnapping, and forced suicide, incrimination, abuse, identity theft, conspiracy, tamper, the crime scene, obstruction of justice, and assault. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Come on. But she's got such a cute smile. Male fanfic. Ugh. Gah. Uh, fix her with soup. No, no, I can do it. No, hold on. Hold on. Hold my beer. Uh, hold my coffee mug. Bridge to the turnabout. So this is going to connect, bring it all together, huh? All together now. Let's go. Episode 5. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, they're really bringing it all together, huh? Shichishito. The treasured Kurain village heirloom, whose name means seven-branched sword. I'm glad that we're picking this back. I was mad we never got an answer. So, okay then. Shit. It is said that this sacred sword represents life itself. Though the branches may appear to be infinite, the choice is limitless. I mean, it's seven, it's not infinite. Oh, like our destinies, the sword comes to but one end, one merciless point. Mm hmm. And when the silver cord, the fragile thread that binds us to this world, is severed. <laughs> the illusion is revealed and the impl implacability of fate is finally laid bare. Uh, uh, don't worry about that? Okay. It's probably fine. 9.48 a.m. February 6th. Why, it's been however many years to the day. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Hey, Charlie. Then become ghost. Hey, Nick. What's up? Hey, what is it? You know I've got spiritual powers unlike you. Yeah. Sure. You are a spirit medium after all. But just like you, if I don't keep my powers sharp, they get dull, right? Uh, I guess so, yeah. Glad you agree. Okay, Pearly, you're up. Pearls. So, that's why we need to go on a special spiritual hotspot tour, Mr. Nick. Huh, I'm lost. What's this magazine you're shoving in my face? It's the New Year's issue of Occult Winter Spiritual Location Special. Occult. Oh, oh, Pearls look so happy. Maximize your spiritual powers with just one night of intensive training. Oh, it sounds too good to be true. I'll say. Sounds more like a scam to me. It's at a spiritual retreat called Hazakura Temple. It's way up in the mountains, and I bet it's nice and cold, just perfect for training. Now, I definitely don't want to go. You know, I think I've heard of this temple before. It's a famous channeling dojo. Wouldn't happen to be near a bridge, would it? It's hard for even real spirit mediums like us to make reservations up there. Reservations? For a temple? You serious? Don't worry, I've already made special reservations just for us. Yeah. And I signed up for the special course. That's nice. And the timing couldn't be better. Since we don't have a case right now anyway. Alrighty then, it's settled. Well, come on. Don't just stand there. Start packing your stuff. Yes, Mr. Nick, you better start packing your stuff. Huh? Me? Why do I have to go? Well, we have to be accompanied by someone over 20 years old. Hey, I don't have anything to do with spirit power. The only thing I can channel is a TV. So, uh, is there a heated pool at this Yasakura temple? Nope, we can stand under a freezing waterfall. Sorry, but I think I'll pass. I hate cold places. What? No way! How can you be so selfish? Come on, Mr. Nick. Look at this place. Doesn't it look beautiful? Nope, not going. I'm gonna be nice and toasty at home. 
What the? What is it, Mr. Nick? Let me see that magazine. This nun. Is she a friend of yours or something, Nick? This girl. It's... This bitch. It's, my name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? You disgust me. Uh, but it can't be. That's impossible. She was found guilty and should still be in prison. Mr. Nick? I'll go. Huh? Hazakura Temple. I said I'll go. Yay! I'll pack my burgers. Isn't that great, Burley? Yes, oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nick. You do anything for Mystic Maya, right? Even walk over burning coals, right? Occult New Year's issue received from Poles. Happy New Year. Stay back, demon! Dahlia Hawthorne. She was killed? She wasn't killed. She was just found guilty of, um... murdering her ex. Five years ago, I knew there was no way she could possibly be at that temple. But I just had to be... I just had to be see for myself! Who this nun really was. I'll be seeing the truth. Whoa. I love the, the ancient Japanese temples in the mountains of California. February 7th, 3.24pm. Hazakura Temple. Main gate. Burr! It's so cold here, Nick! Maybe you should put on something warmer for a change. Well, it's supposed to be cold. It's training. Achoo! Her teeth are chattering so loudly, it's all I can do to make out what she's saying. Wow, well, Mystic Maya, so this is the famous Hazakura Temple. The Hazakura Temple in Yellowstone. Pearly! Achoo! Well, well, well. How nice to see you here. Welcome to our temple. Oh, th thank you. Achoo! Oh my, my, my. Thank you for coming all this way. Come now, come now. You must have been cold. What's with the past tense? We're freezing into human popsicles as we speak. Ho, ho, ho. Well, we are high up in the mountains after all. In any case, we shouldn't speak here. Please follow me inside. Thank you. I was starting to think I would pass. Oh, yes, yes. I almost forgot to introduce myself. I'm the head nun here at the temple. My name is Bikini. The traditional Japanese name. B Bikini. That's right. Actually, that's my temple name. What do you think? Huh? It's a tradition to have one, and I wanted something that has a nice image to it. So I thought, why not choose a bikini? Besides, it makes me seem younger. Ha wa ha! Ho ho! It's her Christian name. It certainly does. Oh, I signed up for your special course. Well, my, my, my. Quite brave of you, considering how cold it is. Young people can be so reckless with their health. Don't blame me if you become one with those you channel. Wahaha! ho 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 Reckless? Wahaha! ha Maybe you should take it easy tonight, Mystic Maya. We can come back another day. But you went through all that trouble to get reservations for- Yes, yes, that's right. You've come all this way, so please, enjoy yourselves. There's still time before supper, so why don't you have a look around? Okay. I didn't get to say bye to Charlie. This sucks. Yep. Oh, it's the Peschel issue. The Joe Pesci cover. Magatama. I'm an attorney. Man. Charlie understands. I hope so. Uh, nah. What do you think, Nick? Pretty awesome gate, huh? It sure is. Looks pretty well maintained, too. This thing kind of puts your hometown to shame, Maya. Yeah, well, a lot of things have happened in Crane Village. We used to be a lot richer back when people hired us to perform channelings. I see, but now the place looks a bit run down. I guess I was just born in the wrong time. That looks like the main hall where we'll be staying tonight. From here, it looks like one of those ice hotels you always hear about. They gotta have a heater or something in there, don't you think? I don't want to die. I'm not worried. I brought my hot water bottle. Did you bring one for me? What are you talking about, Nick? 
Who carries around two hot water bottles? If the cold doesn't kill me, the Ice Queen over here will finish the job. I wonder if a spooky murder is gonna happen overnight. Look, it's one of those snow motorcycle things. Most people call that a snowmobile, you know? Snow motorcycle things. Snow blow meal. Same thing. Snow blow meal. Hmm. Too bad we didn't invite Desiree. <gasps> Desiree mentioned. I bet she could race like the wind on this snowmobile. But she said it right this time. Or maybe she'd give me a ride on this blow snowmobile. Man. Ah, I told you it's snowmobile. I take it for a ride. Ba -da -ba -da. Oh, look! It's a cute little bell tower. I absolutely love the sound of a giant bell. So, which do you like better? That or the sound of money? Oh, God. She doesn't... Oh, no. Sorry, but I'll take money for the win, Nick. What are you apologizing for? Thought we'd be stuck there for an hour as she processed the question. Seems like that's probably everything. Hi. Um, I'm an attorney. It's a snow machine. I may not look like it, but I can tell you I'm very much in demand. And to be quite honest, I'm finding this a little difficult to say. What is she trying to say, Mr. Nick? I think she's trying to say that she's busy. But seriously, Nick, what's, what's the deal? Nothing's even happened yet, and you're already shoving evidence into people's faces. You need to forget about work and relax a little. Try to have some fun, okay, Mr. Nick? Yeah, you're right. Sure, pin the hypothermia on the lawyer is great fun. How about the Magatama? Nope. Be gay, do crime fake? That's her. Uh, nope. Can't look at that either. Okay. Uh, so we got Mia. We got Maya. Age deceased. Godot. What a mystery, that mystery man. Pearl. Channeling Prodigy. In bikini, age 48, a hardy motherly nun at Hazakura Temple, a channeling dojo deep in the mountains. Sup? Uh, so what's a channeling dojo anyway? Oh my, 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 you don't even know that? Forgive him, sister, for he knows not what he is saying. Well, well, just call me bikini and forget that sister part. A channeling dojo is basically a spiritual power training ground. We have special holy items prepared here to help people boost their spiritual power. Holy items? Did we train an entire evening surrounded by these items? Ah, uh, it's quite mysterious. The spiritual power of these items seems to envelop you. Wahahaha. Hey, low quality. Thanks for the wait. Hope you had a good stream. She must have just gotten off the trolley from the land of make-believe. So what exactly is the special course? You must be incredibly devoted to be interested in that at such a young age. It's a training session where you sit on a block of spirit ice and chant a spell. 30,000 times, all while being showered in freezing cold spirit water. Eh? It's February now, right? You have to be careful this time of the year. If you don't watch it, you'll catch pneumonia or maybe even die of hypothermia. So be careful, you hear? Waha ho ha ha. How am I supposed to be careful? Oh no, I knew I should have signed Mystic Maya up for this. No, the other none. Uh, sister, about this picture. Well, well, look at that. I must say I look rather divine here, don't you think? Uh, yeah. Unforgettable in every way. You mean it? Oh, I knew it. Wah, ha, wah. The makeup was pretty tough, but Iris helped me out. Iris? The cute little girl in the photo. She looks just like me, doesn't she? We're just a small temple here, so she and I run the entire place. Really? That kind of sounds like fun. Sorry to cut in, but this Iris, where is she right now? Oh, just listen to you. You haven't come all the way up here just to find a girlfriend, have you? No, no, no. That's not what I had in mind at all. Anyway, Iris is in the inner temple preparing for this evening. Inner temple? Yes, yes, that's right. Iris will be back this evening. Why don't you go have a look at the main hall for now? Waha, waha, ha, 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 ha. In the inner temple, huh? Gotta go. I can't wait to learn that this Iris has never met me before. To the suspension bridge? Oh no. Oh no. Oh god, we're right next to the bridge. 
Looks like they fixed it, though. Look at this broken down old bridge, Nick. Yeah, look at that big canyon below us. Hey, there's a river down there. Looks like it's flowing real fast. What's wrong, Nick? You look like you've seen a ghost. Just not very good with heights. Hey, I've got it. Maybe you should face your fear and try hurling yourself off the edge. Too soon, Maya. You know, one, two, three, jump. It might be just what you need to get over your fear of heights. Yeah, death is a real good way to overcome phobias, all right. Anyway, it sure looks like a rickety bridge. Can't argue there. That's probably why it's called Dusty Bridge. Read it again, Maya. It says Dusky Bridge. Well, it's practically the same thing. Good God. There's a narrow path going off in a different direction than that of the main hall. The sign here is so old, the text seems to have vanished. The path leads to a wooden staircase that goes down to the bottom of the canyon. Okay, I'll write wooden staircase on it then. Do you really think that is necessary? You have to be blind not to see the stairs. Well, it can't hurt. Just pass me a pencil, okay? Graffiti's a crime, Maya. Some letters are engraved into a roughly cut boulder. D-U-S-T-Y bridge, huh? It says dusky, dusky bridge. Come on, Nick, take a look at that bridge. Tell me it's not supposed to be dusty. This sign is obviously wrong and I'm gonna fix it. Now give me a pencil, Nick. Do I look like a pencil holder to you? I think that she's gonna try to fix an engraving with pencil. I can't believe there's a public phone here. Who would ever use it? The people who live here, I guess? I doubt they have any real phones there. Yeah, but it took like 20 minutes to walk here from the main hall. It would have been smarter than to build the main hall here, don't you think? Maybe you should work on channeling someone who makes logical sense, Maya. Come on, Nick. Why don't we hop across the bridge? It'll be fun. I'm not so sure. It looks like a bunny hopping... It looks like a bunny hopping across the bridge would destroy it. Okay, Nick, then let's try to find a cute little white bunny and test your theory. That right there sums up the fundamental difference between sane and insane. Good. Great. Good. Great. Looks like it's about 20 yards to that cliff over there. You know, just like, just like 20% of a football field. I guess that's where I'll be training tonight. Do you want to train with me, Nick? And do the special course? I think not. But it'd be so great if you had spiritual powers, too. Really? I see dead people sounds more like a cause for alarm to me. Movie reference! Let's go back. Six cents? There's only five senses. February 7th, Hazakuro Temple, Main Hall. That's a big Magatama. The Main Hall? I think it's even colder in here. Ah, Mr. Nick, do you smell that? It smells like meat and gravy. Big food gummy. You're right, I guess it's pot roast for tonight. Yum. Weird, I thought they would serve something a little more... Uh, traditional. What are you talking about, Nick? You think monks and nuns just sit around eating rice gruel all the time? Mystic Maya's right. Ooh, I hope there's mashed potatoes, too. Ha ha ha. What a cute little acolyte. Oh, uh oh. Hello, wizard. This is just fucking Renala from Elden Ring. Greetings to all of you. Uh, hello. Wow, this lady makes Maya look like a 6.8 out of 10 on the weirdness scale. Slash Bayonetta. The theme is good. Your outfit! Did you come here for the special course, too? Are you gonna murder someone while we're here? Unfortunately, no. Actually, I'm... Ah! You're... You're... You're Miss Elise... Donim? Dunim? Elise Dunim? How, what? Do... Don... Donim. Donuts. Elite police donuts. That's right. You know of me. My name is Pearl Fay. I'm your biggest fan. Who is she, Nick? Uh, I see it now. Zvari, a fortune teller? I've got all your books, Miss Donim. Is her name like a pseudonym? Is that why? Her name's not Sue, though. That'd be good. That'd be pretty good. That'd also be a lot more sus. 
Hi, my name is Sue Donim. And it's like, hmm. Hmm. What a sweet thing to say. And please call me Elise. Uh, books? Mr. Nick, don't you know anything? Don't you even know what this is? Uh, well, uh, an author, maybe? Yes, and an illustrator of picture books. Picture books, huh? Oh, now I get it. Let me look at that big old Fukumi in the back. Out of my way! There's a laughably large Magatama on the altar. That's the second biggest Magatama I've ever seen. If I can see Cyclops with a tiny Magatama I've got, I can only imagine what kind of power this bad boy has under his hood. It's an altar. It looks a bit old, but someone does a good job taking care of it. Speaking of altars, I remember seeing one like this in Crane Village last year. I guess they really do have something to do with spiritual power after all. There's straw Zabuton cushions arranged around a hibachi brazier. I haven't seen a layout like this since I saw this really old Japanese movie on TV. If it wasn't for this hibachi, they'd probably freeze to death. I bet the writing on these sliding doors are instructions for spirit channeling. Traditional American Zabuton. Kind of like how we scribbled math formulas on the bathroom walls to remember them. Except we couldn't go to the bathroom during tests, and I can't read these walls. Hmm. I'm gonna eat some tasty hamburger. Bet the writing on these sign doors is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right. That's just the altar. All right. Hi there. I'm an attorney. Miss Donim, what do you think about this? Do you think Miss Elise is a suspect? Huh? You may be Mystic Maya's special someone, but I won't let you do this to Miss Elise. A suspect? Why would I suspect her of anything? It's not like anything's happened. Yet. Isn't it cute, Nick? Pearly's getting all overprotective of her new friend. This is adorable. Miss Donin, what do you think about this? Nope. Never mind. Ah! The rapid fire! Pow pow! Tell me about yourself. I'm sorry I didn't know who you are. I don't get a lot of chances to really enjoy picture books. It's alright, I take no offense to that. My books are nothing but simple stories for children. And really beautiful pictures too, Miss Elise. Your books always make me feel as if my heart has been purified. Ha ha ha. It makes me feel very happy to hear you say that. I do have to admit, she certainly seems like a kind, sensitive lady. Miss Elise won an award last year for her book, The Magic Bottle. Yes, a friend of mine secretly submitted a story I'd written to a publisher. They liked it so much they asked if it was alright to make it into a book. Wow, must have been a really great story. Maybe I should try to write a children's book, too. If I do, you can secretly send it to a publisher for me, Nick. Recently, I've accepted a sort of apprentice, you might say. Apprentice? He calls himself Loris. Loris Dunim. I believe he's off doing some landscape sketches now. Bottle. On Loris's behalf as well, I'd like to thank you for your support. Of course, Miss Elise, anything for you. Ha ha ha. Why here? I didn't even think about it being Larry, if that's the case. Shit, I hope you're wrong. Why did you come to Hazakura Temple, Miss Elise? Are you here to do some spiritual training? Ha ha ha. No, that's not it. I'm actually here to gather materials for a new book I'm working on. Wow! I can't wait to read it! Pearls is completely taken with her. I wanted to do a book with a more Japanese feel to it this time. So is that why you're dressed like you are? The children have a certain image of me in their minds. I don't want to disappoint them. What can I say? She's really a sweet lady. Wow, Miss Elise, you're dressed up like a mountain nun! Yes, the good people here were kind enough to let me borrow this. I'm wearing training clothes underneath my robe as well. I want a staff like that! You like the crystal sphere? It's real amethyst, you know. Maybe we'll find one like that up here on this mountain. Good luck, Nick. I know you'll find me one. Well, you'll have to excuse me now. I have to go help with the dinner preparations. Wow, you mean you're cooking dinner tonight? That's right. Would you like to help too, Pearl? Yes, yes, I want to help with whatever I can. Pearl looks like she just won the lottery. I'll help too then. No, it's fine. Please don't worry about it. Feel free to relax and explore the area with your friend. Huh? But... Oh, yes. Please take this. I think it will be of help to you. Oh. Oh. 
It's a map of the area. We wouldn't want you to get lost now, would we? Hmm. The inner temple. There it is, on the other side of the bridge. We have to cross the bridge to get there? Well, if you insist, I guess we'll take this chance to go check out the other temple. Great. Okay, I'll see you two later then. Remember, you're not allowed to fight. Come on, Nick. Let's go. At least we'll stay warm if we keep moving. I don't know what's happening. I just know I don't like it. Huh? Where'd Sister Bikini go? I guess she went to the inner temple to go help that other nun out. Oh, right. I think her name is Iris? Yeah, that was it. I want to find out who Iris really is, but I'm scared of what I'll find. Let's go. To the sus bridge. Nope. Nope. Oh, God. Inner temple gate. Inner temple gate. And the sky is gray. Whoa! That bridge was shaking like jello in an earthquake. And at least half of the wood on that rickety bridge was rotting, I'd bet. Not to mention the last part only had like one board left on it. What's wrong with you? Your face is all green. Can you not pick on me for a second? I'm still trying to get over the shock that we made it ac safely across that death trap. I guess I'm a bit surprised too. Oh. Widescreen. Yikes, that temple's in bad shape. Looks like it could collapse any time. Guess people don't use it too often. Is this really where you're gonna train tonight? That has to be it. It's kind of creepy around here, like a ghost might jump out at you or something. A spirit medium afraid of ghosts? Isn't it ironic, don't you think? Isn't it? A smidge. Looks like this bridge is suspended by four of these wires. They're really thin. Shouldn't they be just a little thicker? Oh, stop it. You're such a worrywart, Nick. If the bridge were really going to collapse, I'm pretty sure the boards would break before these wires ever did. What's wrong? You're turning into an overripe avocado again. I'm fine. Oh, wow. Look at these neat Buddha statues. Maybe I'll take one home with me. Maya! But there are so many, they wouldn't notice if I took just one. Are you kidding? Of course they'll notice. What are you gonna do with one of those anyway? Put it in the office, of course. We can trade that wooden statue in the office reception area for one of these. You know, come to think of it, where did that wooden statue come from anyway? Merely Char Charlie brought it to work one day. I don't care how much you pay me, I don't wanna cross that bridge again. No worries, Nick. No one's offering you any money. That's because no reasonable person would call that pile of popsicle sticks a bridge. The latter half of it was nothing more than a few planks of wood and some string. Hey, if we want to get back, we've got no choice but to cross it again, you know? Maybe I'll just stay. I've always dreamed of living in a little shack in the woods. Wow, you really are scared, aren't you? Thanks, Maya. I'm doing fine. Hey! There's a giant robot buried in the snow! Well, there's something buried in the snow, but I think it's an incinerator? Oh, but you gotta admit, it looks a lot like a robot. Sure. Anyway, I don't think it gets used much. It's looking pretty rusty. Hey, Nick, do you think this giant robo incinerator can walk? I told you, it's not a robot, and it's not especially big, either. You have no imagination. I thought it'd be real neat if you had to beat it to advance. A fight between a lawyer and an overgrown furnace? Who'd ever pay to see that? I, me, 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 me. Does this series need, uh, fight sequences? No. Would I say no to one happening against the robot? Also no. MVC3. Does he fight a giant robot in MVC3? Furnace versus Capcom. Looks like there's something written on it. Tron has a robot, that's true. Hmm, kind of trash can size too. Sentinel? Sentinel's like a robot. I can't read it, but if I had to take a good guess, I'd say it says Inner Temple. And MODOK. A lot of almost robots in MVC. What's the point of a sign if you can't read it? Sentinel's very much a robot? Am I thinking of someone else? You're right, Sentinel's one of those X-Men stompy robots. You're 100% right. Must be tough for the mailman when he's delivering here. I guess the sign is a good indication of how long this place has been here. Been here a minute. 
Zero two. Yeah, zero zero. Okay, okay. I, there's a lot of robots in NPC. A half open gate that's practically a welcome mat. Except the sign in here says no entry. Nick, rules are made to be broken, you know. You expect a lawyer to go along with that? Oh, come on. You're such an old lady sometimes. Let's just go. Don't blame it on me when Sister Bikini puts a curse on you. No, you got me scared. Uh, let's just forget about it, okay? Just literally telling a lawyer, what? Let's just break the rules a little bit. So that's the inner temple up ahead, huh? Looks kind of run down. Well, it wouldn't be very temple-like if it was all bright and shiny. So you're training here tonight, huh? Yep, then everyone will see my spiritual powers. <laughs> Sounds like your stomach wants to show off its digestive powers instead. I wonder if that roast is ready yet. That's like a Borgor. Uh, 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 uh-huh. That's a bit ominous. Look at this place. Just a tiny freezing cold room. This is where you'll both be training, huh? Well, what do you mean, both? I'm the only one. Really? But I thought... Pearly's just a little kid. She couldn't handle this kind of intense training. So says the girl who I can barely hear over her bones chattering. Anyway, the real training room must be behind that door over there. Yeah, I get the feeling it's back there, definitely. Only because the cavern behind that door is giving off a real supernatural feel. Um... Excuse me, but who are you? Ah! You're... Hi there! We're just looking around since we're going to be staying here tonight. Welcome to the weird zone. Yeah. Is something wrong? Uh, no, it's nothing. I wonder why she spaced out like that, don't you, Nick? Amnesia. Did you say something, Maya? Not you too, Nick. Uh, m my name is Iris. That's my real name. I'm one of the nuns here at this temple. I'm Maya Faye. It's a pleasure to meet you. The pleasure is mine. Oh, uh, please excuse me. I have some uh, chores to attend to. She just walk into a wall. She sure is beautiful. <laughs> and a bit spacey, I guess. <laughs> I guess she's just not used to take talking with urban sophisticates like us. Nick? That girl. It can't be, but... How can it be? What if she went to college? Hmm. What if she ever murdered a couple dudes? Uh, the actual training area must be on the other side of this door. I wonder what it's like. My brain is having thoughts. Uh -oh. Fooey, it's locked. Come on, Nick. You know you want to open it for me. <clears throat> I can't. You've been in kind of a bad mood lately, haven't you, Nick? Zvari! I know what it is. I-R-I-S. That spells Dusky Bridge. Yeah. We never met this character before. No. Never. Ha 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 ha. Iris and Nick sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Since when does Maya know how to spell? Iris, 25, a nun at Hazakura Temple. She reminds me so much of her. And Elise Donim, age question mark. Kind-eyed author and illustrator of picture books. Pearl's a huge fan of hers. <clears throat> a hanging scroll. Doesn't look that old, either. Ah! Ah! What is it? Why'd you scream like that? This scroll. It... It's my mother. What? Your mother was a scroll? Oh. Help! Maya, help! I've been trapped in the paper! It's Misty Fay, the master of the Crane School of Channeling. Are you sure? Yes. That crest at the top of the scroll, that's the special mark of the master of our tradition. So that's what the mark means. What is it? Nothing. It's just that I last saw her over 15 years ago. 
it wasn't for that crest, I wouldn't have even known it was her. My own mother. And I can't even recognize her face. Maya. Hang scroll out of the court record. What court record? There's no crime that's been committed here. Everything's fine. Look at this antique dresser. I wonder if there's anything valuable inside. She's back to normal. Let's have a look. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing. Just a bunch of clothes. Hey, Nick. Huh? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking. About Iris, I bet. Looks like you've been bitten by the love bug, Nick. Nuh-uh. More like the, why aren't you in prison, bug? Hmm. Hmm. Is there something else in there, or are we just heading back across? Maybe dinner's ready. Hey, we made it. Whew, we managed to make it across Dusty Bridge. Nick, you look green. You feeling all right? Hey, what's wrong with you? Ever since we met Sister Iris at the training hall, you've been really quiet. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Hey, you! Wait up! Hmm? You think he's yelling at us? He must be. There's no one else around. Would you mind moving? You're standing right in my way! I don't know what makes me more upset. The fact that Larry's here and he's working to be an illustrator for, um... The children's book series, or that he's a painter wearing a pink smock with paint all over it. Like, what's his face from Ghost Trick? Hey, I know you. You're. Whoa, uh, sorry, gotta run. See you. Wait a minute. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Loris Donim. Yeah, Detective Jow, that's his name. Technically, Larry, that, that's what I'm mad about. <laughs> it's like Larry wore the outfit first. I mean, not with the beret. You know, it's different. Whatever. Liar, you're Larry. Your clothes may change, but you're still the butt. No, no, no. If I change my shirt, I'm a different guy. Shut up. I'm... I'm Loris. And I'm just here to do a sketch of Dusky Bridge. So it really is our Larry. Not that I get why he's pretending to be someone else. Larry, I'm a lawyer. Hey, I know I may not look like it, but I'm an artist. I refuse to look at anything that doesn't have a radiant or beautiful motif. Picky picky, aren't you? That's true of every artist I've ever known. This is beautiful and radiant. Okay, wow. Damn. Damn, dude. What about this map? Damn. Damn, dog. Damn, shit. What about women? How do you feel about looking at women? Wow, you're even cuter than the last time I saw you, but we've never met before. Wait, time up. The brush on horse when he holds it up is a perspective. Yes, yeah, perspective. Oh, really? Yeah, you look like a totally different person. Don't you think so, Nick? Maybe it's because we're always together, but she looks pretty much the same to me. This is the same dialogue. Hey, I remember her. That's Maya's big sister. You really do remember. I've never met you before. Couple of gorgeous sisters. You hear that, Nick? Gorgeous. That's right. When I defended Larry, he was still alive. Um, Bikini. She seems really motherly, doesn't she? What do you mean, seems motherly? She is my mother. Bikini butt? She's your what? I'm gonna have to take a pass on answering that one. Wait a second. Why is he getting off so easy this time? Elise is really something. She's like a mother to me. You can tell from the kindness reflected in her eye. She's like your your actual mother. What? I mean, fair. When I first looked into her eyes, I just couldn't help it. I started blabbing about all my, the bad things I'd done in my life. She just laughed that gentle laugh of hers and listened. You sure she wasn't just laughing at you? Larry can have two mobs, right? Ooh, yeah, her. My little Iris. She's really pretty. This girl, she's perfect. She's exactly my type. I wonder if she would model for me. I want to draw a portrait of her. Yeah, you always liked those model types, didn't you, Larry? Hey, wait a sec. Didn't you say you were swearing off women? Huh? Yeah, that's right. Of course I have. I have basically, but... 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 Iris is different. 
I feel like, like I still have one chance left at the dream. This guy will never change. Hi, Lorise. Hey, I know I may not look like it, but I'm an artist. I refuse to look at anything that doesn't have a rating or beautiful motif. It's just you. Better known as Larry Butts, current in training as Elise Donum's pupil. Mm -hmm. I can fix him. Ugh. So what are you doing with the last name Donum? Well, I, I just, I wanted to start over again with a clean slate. Sorry, with a clean soup. Thank you, garbage. A clean slate. You remember, don't you, last time? The mask to mask case. After that, I started to realize I didn't like this guy known as Larry Butts. He joined the crowd. And that's when I came across it. The Book of Destiny. The Book of Destiny? Do you mean... The Magic Bottle by Miss Elise Donum? It's so beautiful. So moving. So gentle. My heart felt cleansed. I was saved. Maybe I should buy a copy of The Magic Bottle. Wow, Larry would make a great book salesman. I really want to get that book now, too. Oh, she's the most wonderful person I've ever met. I'd follow her anywhere. Well, she certainly is a very elegant lady. You see, you see? Here's a photo I took of her in secret. Okay, all right. That's a beautiful photo. You want a copy, don't you? It's okay, I just happen to have made extra prints. Thank you? Hey, Larry, don't do that. Picture books. Still, it's kind of hard to imagine you as a picture book illustrator looking directly at the camera. So tell the truth, you must have some kind of ulterior motive, right? What are you talking about? I don't. I don't trust anyone anymore, especially not women. Talk about a bad case of denial. Anyway, can you even draw well enough to make a picture book? Art isn't only about technical skill, you know. It's also about having a pure heart. And that's why I'm asking, can you draw well enough to make a whole book? What? Hmm. Now that you mention it, I wonder. Looks like you still have some doubt in your heart. It's true, I do. But when I first saw her, I felt it. Something inside me ended and something else began. Ah, oh, Larry, it sounds like you've fallen in love with Miss Elise Donum. No, you're wrong. It's not her, it's the other girl. Other girl? Uh-oh. I got a bad feeling about this. Everyone! Hey, Pearls. Hey, Pearly! Dinner preparations are complete. Please come quickly to the main hall. All right! I can't wait to dig in, Pearly. I'm gonna go to the Inner Temple and call Sister Iris. I also want to have a look at where Mystic Maya is gonna be training. Just watching her, like, hobbling across the broken bridge. As all the planks just snap in half. Like, have fun, Pearl! Run along now. Just half falling in the, the river. 7.46 p.m. Main hall. She just jumps the whole thing. Just running jump all the way across. Boy, am I stuffed. Are you sure it's all right to eat that much before your training? Well, this kind of training is a battle of endurance. Mystic Maya, please don't do anything that might put your health at risk. Ha <laughs> ha. No pain, no gain, I guess. I'm still worried about you. Well, 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 let's not dilly-dally shilly-shally. You must get ready for tonight. Good luck, Maya. All right, here I go. I'll see you all tomorrow, I guess. Thanks for the soup, TFK. Well, starts default dancing. She's been watching Fortnite on YouTube. Iris, please ring the bell at 10 o'clock for lights out, all right? Yes, Sister Bikini. And then, after you ring the bell, I want you to come join us at the training hall. I understand, Sister Bikini. Maya and Bikini really seem excited about this training thing tonight. Well, Pearl, what are you going to do tonight? Thank you for the soup. They were low on memory in the original GBA release and needed to make her shorter free up memory. Honestly, hilarious reason for her to be so short. Really? That's amazing. <laughs> Will he have en enough room for this many pixels? Alright, just make her small. Shit. If you'd like, you can come to my room. Perhaps we can read some books together. Really? I'd love to! I, I'm not very good at reading. Ah, uh, well then. Would you like to practice reading with me? I'd love to! 
Krill's is absolutely smitten with Miss Donan. So everyone has their alibi. Hey, Larry, what are you gonna do? Uh, me? Uh, well, I'm just gonna hang out in my room. I can't stand the cold at all. I totally hear you there. Miss Elise? So, for example, how do you read this? It says gravely. That's kind of a tough word. Oh, okay. What about this word? That's another tough one. It says roast. What kind of a book is she reading anyway? Well, I'm gonna go wash the dishes and help clean up. I'll go visit you when I'm done, Miss Elise. Well, not much to do except head to my room and huddle under the covers, I guess. And then, in the middle of the night, 9, 12 p.m., Hazakura Temple, Main Hall. It's a recipe for pot roast. It's a whole different type of cold up here in the mountains. Ah, uh, why couldn't the nearest bathroom be just a little closer to my room? Mr. Wright? Yeah! Ah! White woman jump scare? Miss Donim? You gonna use the bathroom too? Uh, no, but have you seen Pearl? No, not since after dinner. I thought she said she was gonna go to your room. I know, but she never showed up. Oh. Uh, I'm going to go look for her. Excuse me. Oh. Miss Elise Stoneham, a woman as mysterious in origin as her last name. But the really mysterious one is... Oh. Ah! Sister Iris! G good evening. The real mysterious one is this girl. Um, are you on your way to the bathroom too, Mr. Wright? I can't let this chance pass me by. I should try to talk with her and maybe get some answers. Where you... Well, oh. Oh. Oh, well, Dahlia had red hair. So, she must be a different person then. Hello. Uh, your sister Iris, right? Yes. So, uh, when did you come to Hazakura Temple? I don't remember. Ever since I was a small child, the temple has been my home. So you never left. Well, I don't have any family left to take care of me. Sister Bikini, I've come to think of her as my real mother, as it were. I see. But you didn't... you go to college? Like a female college student and maybe enroll with the Ivy University Literature Department? No, I never had an interest in going to a big university like that. My training is all the education I need. I see. But, once in a while, when I get the chance, I make a trip to the nearby town. I can use a computer and a cell phone, too. That's not exactly something worth bragging about. But I don't see any psych locks. Yeah, I guess that means she's not lying. Unless her purple Magatama counteracts my green Magatama, and she can lie in my presence because of her spirit training. And she is lying. Please don't stare at me like that. Uh, tell me about the temple. It's an Amtagam. It's the big Magatama in the back. What kind of a place is this anyway? I heard it's for training to increase your spiritual power or something like that. It must seem awfully crazy to normal people like you. Well, I have to admit it is a whole different world up here. I'm glad to hear you say that. Huh? Talking with dead people, who does it help anyway? I hate it. Really? So then why stay in a place like this? Ah. Something wrong? I didn't realize it was so late. I have to go and ring the bell for lights out. I guess it's almost 10 o'clock now, huh? Um, Mr. Wright? Yes? If it's alright with you, I would like you to have this. Why? Welcome, Mortal Pit. That's a powerful name. Thanks. So this, uh, welcome. Um, I don't want this. Is it poison? This is your hood. Welcome. Hope you enjoy the emotes. It has the power to protect you from evil spirits. Come to think of it, Sister Bikini was wearing one of these too. I pray for your safety on this dark, cold night. It's dark, isn't it? Iris's hood received from Iris. I'm sorry, but I must bid you good night. Yeah, okay. I have this weird photo of Elise. That's gonna be important later for some reason. Great, love that. Is it like a spooky castle in the back? Um, and Iris's hood. Magical hood said to offer protection from evil spirits. Great. Good. Don't eat the hood. Oh. Wait a minute! Sister Iris! Yes? 
Just now, you called me by my name. You said, Mr. Wright. Wait. How did you know my name? I never introduced myself to you. I even pick up on that. That's... Sister Iris, please tell me the truth. You and I, have we ever met before? Oh! Oh! Well, that's a lot of Cyclops. Iris? Oh, it's almost 10 o'clock. Perhaps we can speak again tomorrow when I'll sadly be murdered and I won't be able to talk to you except via spirit channeling. Okay, goodbye. Have a go, have a good murder in the night. So my hunch was correct. She does know me. I'll have to try to talk with her again tomorrow. But she was telling the truth or thinks she was telling the truth about her living at the temple her whole life and never going to Cool Egg. So how does that make sense? Yeah! What the? That blood-curdling scream came from the courtyard! February 7th, 11.06 p.m. Hazakura Temple, courtyard. That scream! I'm sure it came from around here. Ah! Someone's there! On the ground! Miss Donium! Squish! I just stepped on something soft. Hey, don't step on my tummy like that! What? What are you doing lying there in the snow? I was passed out, what do you think? So that blood-curling scream was you? Forget about that, hurry up and call the police! Is there even a phone in the main hall? No, but we still get reception up here in the mountains. You must have a cell phone on you, right? Does Phoenix have a cell phone? I, uh, I didn't bring it with me. You're useless! I mean, even Iris has a cell phone. We've got no choice. You have to use the public phone by Dusky Bridge. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Run as fast as you can! Yes, ma'am. You don't hurry. Iris will. Iris will! Iris will what? 11.18 p.m. Dusky Bridge. Yeah, it's farther than I thought. The bridge is just up ahead. I have to go tell Maya what happened, too. Ah! Whoa! Dusky Bridge, it's burning down! What the heck happened? What are you doing here? Ah! Uh, what is it? Is it me? Don't scare me like that, Larry. I almost had a heart attack. My name isn't Larry, it's Larice. Larry, hurry up and call the police. I'm, in, I'm going to the inner temple. Don't be stupid. The bridge is nothing but a burning wreck right now. Listen to me, there's been a murder here at Hazakura Temple. What? <laughs> <laughs> the murderer must have fled across the bridge. Or might have. I have to make sure Maya is safe. What? Please, call the police. I've got to go. Get out of my way, Larry. It's too dangerous, Nick. Wait. I must have been crazy. I knew how dangerous it was, but I still went for it. Weakened even more by the fire, the rickety old bridge's plank snapped and gave way. And as, and as I was swallowed by the eternal darkness that surrounded me, a final terrified scream rose up to pierce the frozen air of that harrowing night. And then he died, the end. So that's how he died. The end. And that's case five. Huh! That's an interesting case. Then didn't know he didn't know he died at the end of the series, but well, guess we did it. A eh? a eh, chat. The end. Uh, or did I? Do I leave it here or do we keep going for the night? Question mark. Leave it here. Keep going. Keep going. It's a long case. I know it's a long one. Keep going. A little more. A little more. It's very long. Well, ha I mean, the question is how long until the next, like, chapter segment, right? 
You're in hell. Welcome. Yeah. Am I going to go on trial against Satan? A bunch of demons in the courtroom? At least a few hours. Yeah, that's a while. You're going to want to keep going. You're going to want to see this. It's not too bad till next break. This is a good place to pause, really. Oh, pull it! Find another one to two hours. Am I feeling tired? I'm always tired. Uh, what do? Keep going. Uh, hold it. Get it? Like in the game. I mean, we'll come back to this next stream regardless of whether or not we keep going right now. Um, I'm not 35 yet, but, you know. To stop point in 10 minutes, but it's not to be continued. That's fair. I mean, we don't, we don't have to stop at A to be continued. So if there's a decent stopping point not far after this. I'm 53 years young. I want to play Valorant. You can go play Valorant, Shiv. I'm not going to stop you from playing Valorant. You can't, I can't just save and quit. It's just always convenient to be like, here's a stopping point. Ended 30 minutes ago. You're welcome. But the cliffhanger. Uh, 70%, okay, 70% says keep going. We'll go a little longer. Uh, but I don't think I can make it until the next to be continued. Um, so if and when there's a good stopping point, we'll do it there. Anyway, we died. Hey, Caffey Knight. The suspense. Who could that be at this time of night? Beep. Yes, Edgeworth speaking. Edgy, get up, it's an emergency. Did Larry call Edgeworth instead of the police? Bottom screen changed. Bottom s- Huh? Larry? Do you know what time it is? It's not Larry, it's Larice. Larice don't him. This is nothing more than a terrible nightmare. I'll just roll over and- Wait, don't hang up! It's an emergency! It's Nick! He- he took a really nasty spill! Well, it wouldn't be the first time, so... I'm not joking! His life is in danger! What... what happened? Tell me! Talk about a guy with bad luck. He may already be dead! Anyway, you've got to come back! You're the only one that can help! Right. In the current timeline, Edgeworth is fucking off somewhere, isn't he? My Iris, my beautiful Iris, she needs help! Alright, I don't know what's going on, but... I'll be there as soon as I can. I'm at the detention center. Please, hurry! It's been one year since I left that country. Mirka. I thought I wouldn't have to see him again for a while. Sounds like it won't be a pretty reunion, as if I expected anything to change. Yeah, it's been February 8th, 2.19 p.m. Detention center, visitor's room. You're late, Edgy! What took you so long? I don't want to hear it. I chartered a private jet to come as quickly as I could. Well, you should have chartered a faster one. Anyway, just listen. Something happened to Miss Elise, and Nick is... My, uh, and Iris is... Uh, huh? Say something, Edgy! Before I came here, I stopped in at the hospital where Wright is. I believe I have a better understanding of the situation than you at this point. The murder victim was the picture book author, Miss Elise Donum. She was found by Wright and the head nun. The suspect is the temple's younger nun. Then later, while Wright was crossing the bridge, it broke and he fell into the river. The hospital says that he'll need at least two days of bed rest. Oh, he's okay. That's right. You got it. But they arrested her, my sweet little Iris. And here I was convinced he was the one the police had arrested. However, I still don't understand what these two items are for. What are you talking about? They're things Wright gave to me when I was leaving his room. What did he give me? Just all of his stuff. He just gave me all of his stuff? Okay. All right. What's up? Oh. Dick. Okay. Oh, he gave me a last will and testament. This is the first. Oh my god, Edgeworth can do Cyclops now. He said some nonsense about being able to see into people's hearts with this. And the other... He couldn't possibly be asking what I think he is. Could he? I'm begging you! If Iris's trial starts tomorrow! With Nick out of the picture, you're all I've got left. 
You're the only one that can represent her. What did you just say? You know, represent, defend. What were you expecting? Why do you think I called you anyway? I'm a prosecutor, Larry, a prosecutor. Do you understand what I'm saying? A prosecutor is a lawyer who, don't talk to me like a kid. I graduated from junior high, you know? Don't worry about it, I promise I won't tell. But I, I mean, I heard a paper badge had no problem fooling an entire court before. How could this country's judicial system have fallen to such decay? Please, Edgy, at least listen to her. Listen to Iris' side of the story. So Wright wasn't joking when he gave me this badge after all. Shit. Thank you for coming. My name is Iris. Edgeworth, Miles Edgeworth. I don't know if I can be of any help, but... Or at least hear what you have to say about the murder. Um... Mr. Wright, how is he? Mr. Loris said that he... that he might even die. Fortunately, he will be fine. Larry, you moron! How could you say something like that? He was badly bruised when he hit the water, but otherwise he's unharmed. Thank goodness. But he's caught some kind of nasty cold. A cold? He's running a high fever and is drifting in and out of consciousness. I must be imagining things. This woman. I feel like I've met her before. Um... Phoenix has a badge. Is that an attorney's badge? Yes, this belongs to Wright. Really? I'm actually a prosecutor. Oh! Then why do you have a defense attorney's badge pinned on your lapel? Well, you see, I... I borrowed it. Magatam. I'm sorry, I don't leave the temple grounds very often, so I don't know very much about the outside world. Yeah. Who is the woman on this hanging scroll? He pinned it on. He did. I don't know the details, but... I've heard she's the master of the Korean channeling technique. Master? Yes, Mystic Misty. She was a great spirit medium, that's what I've heard. I also heard that she went missing over 15 years ago. Spirit mediums? There's no such thing anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, I know all about them. They're nothing but frauds. She doesn't know anything about it, of course. But there was a time 17 years ago when I met the master myself. That's called a Demon Warding Hood. I gave that to Mr. Wright last night. Welcome back, Danayasha. Thank you. Three, five months from three years, it's been crazy. It is wild, thank you. Maya exists. How many times has he seen her just squash and stretch like someone grabbing a JPEG in Photoshop in the middle of court? How many times has that happened? He was wearing this when I saw him at the hospital today. It's an important item for protecting acolytes from evil spirits. If it's so important, then why did you give it to him? Last night, I felt something. I felt that something terrible was about to happen. I didn't want Mr. Wright to fall into its grip. I only wound up falling into something much deeper and colder. I probably shouldn't say that out loud, though. Thank God for inner monologue. Oh my God, it's weird to play someone who's competent. I'm sorry. I don't leave the temple grounds. Yeah. I was against the idea of our temple appearing in that magazine. I was afraid that this type of a tragedy might occur. In that case, why did you allow them to run an article about you? It was Sister Bikini. She's actually rather fond of attention, surprisingly so. She certainly does look rather happy in this photo. Eh, yeah, how about this photo, Elise? That's Mystic Elise Donum. She's a picture book author, or so I've heard. Does she come to Hazakura Temple often? No, this was her first time. It's just that... She was a very important visitor. A VIV? Is that so? Yes, Sister Bikini told me. Be certain not to offend her. The victim, Miss Elise Donan. The prosecutor's office still doesn't have much information about her, it seems. Mr. Wright, how bad is his cold? Well, his fever's very high. As a result, he's rather confused. He's worried about Maya, who's still trapped in the inner temple. And he's quite worried about you as well, it seems. Really? Yes. Naturally, once he recovers, I'll pass the baton back to him. No, don't. I'm sure that Mr. Wright wouldn't want that. He wouldn't want to defend me. My friend since grade school. 
Fell from Dusky, uh, Dusky Bridge and is currently hospitalized. Edra thinks the Phoenix has a friend. Dick Gumshoe, homicide detective at the local precinct in charge of initial investigation. Nothing, nothing else. Okay. Friend, parentheses, boy. I'm sorry, I don't leave the temple. Larry Butts, my friend since grade school? I don't remember how we became friends, though. That's fair. Oh, that's Mr. Loris. I'm sorry, who did you say it was? Loris Donim. He is Mystic Elise's apprentice, I think. All right, now who exactly is this guy? He's a very sincere, hardworking person. That's a lot of bits, Ogron. Thank you. Switching over to night shifts. Take this over a bit. Use them while you're offline. It would be more of a viz thing. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, Ogron. Sorry I won't be able to catch live for a bit, but I hope that the night shift goes well. Especially the retail holiday season, specifically. Best of luck, and thanks so much for the bits and for watching and hanging out and stuff. Hope it goes smoothly. He's a very sincere, hardworking person. Um, did I say something wrong, Mr. Edgeworth? Excuse me, I was temporarily at a loss for words. Take a trip, come home, be thrust suddenly into Bizarro World. At least the picture book author of Unknown Age, Larry's teacher. Morning, Crows. That's Mystic Elise Donim. She's a picture book author, or so I've heard. Does she come into Hazakura Temple often? No, this was her first time. All right. That's the same. What about you, Iris? I know I've seen her somewhere before. You want to know about me? There's not much to tell, I'm afraid. Just let me get one thing straight. You were raised at Hazakura Temple, correct? And yet somehow you seem to know right. So you two must have crossed paths somewhere. No, Mr. Edgeworth. Whomever it was, it couldn't have been me. What is that supposed to mean? Okay. Hi. Examine the room? Sure thing. Pardon me, Iris. I would like to ask you something, if you don't mind. I have the distinct feeling you and I have met before. The locks didn't appear. Yeah, they didn't. It must be your imagination, Mr. Edgeworth. After all, I hardly ever leave Hazakura Temple. Hazakura Temple? What's that? It's a place where those who wish to boost their spiritual power come to train. You need to undergo some very difficult training to release your inner spiritual power. Spiritual power. Did you go to that temple for that reason as well? No, I don't have any spiritual powers. I don't need them. In that case, what are you doing at that temple then? I've committed some sins. Sins that I need to pay for. That's why I'm there and why I continue to train, to purify my soul. Yeah, hold that thought. How's it? How you doing, bud? The guard is glaring at me. If someone glares at you, it's only polite to return the favor, is what I was taught. Yeah, it sounds like Manfred. Um, are you alright, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm? Oh, uh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. The camera's glaring at me. If something glares at you, it's only polite to return the favor, is what I was taught. It's just glaring at a camera. Hmm? Oh, excuse me. Great. Very good. All right. Relatable. The night of the crime. Slight persecution complex? No, but he's a prosecuting attorney. It's a prosecuting complex. I want to ask you about last night, the night of the crime. All right. That's why he's scowling all the time. He thinks everyone's glaring at him. I helped to clean up after dinner and then went back to my room at about 8. Later, I left my room to ring the lights out bell at 10 o'clock. Bell. We ring it at the same time each night. I see. And then? And then... I was told to go to the training hall, but I went back to my room and stayed there. Why didn't you go to the training hall like you were asked to? I was frightened. Frightened? So I just stayed in my room and meditated until the murder happened. There's more to her story, I just know there is. Maybe I should dig a little deeper. Frightened? You were asked to go to the training hall on the night of the murder? Yes. However, you didn't go. Because you say you were frightened. What exactly were you so frightened of? What in the world? Um, is there something wrong? I'm sorry, it's nothing. Looks like she's not aware of them herself. These must be what Wright was talking about. The Psycholocks! <laughs> Psycholocks! 
I believe he said that I need to present this Magatama item to do something. Hmm? Any idea? So do you have any ideas to what really occurred that night? Last night? Hey David, welcome. We are we are in case five of this bonkers game. Psychomantis? <coughs> nice. Thank you, Smash Brad. He's a psychonaut. It's true. I think it was the result of the tremendous spiritual power that was unleashed. Spiritual power? Yes. Spiritual training has been a cause behind many great tragedies. This incident was just another example. Iris, I'm sorry, but I can't accept that. I'm a man of science. I don't believe in spiritual power. Yes, I understand. Most people don't. And I'm certain that the thing that killed the victim was a human. So please answer me this simple question. Were you the one who killed Elise Donum? No. I'm not the one who took her life. Hmm. Those psycho lock things aren't appearing. I am kind of mad about the fact that I was like, Oh man, the Shichishito is coming back. We'll get closure on what happened in the mask to mask case, how it got bent, and all that. And this game's like, no, there's another one in a different place. So at this point, I'm just giving up on hope of getting those loose threads ever rectified. Uh, I suppose that means I can believe that she's not lying. What's wrong? I can't believe what I'm thinking. And here I just finished saying that I don't believe in spiritual power. Hmm. It appears that about all that you can tell me, that's all about you can tell me. Thanks so, thank you so much for to listening to my story. I visited right at the hospital before coming here. He asked me to take care of you. Me? Yes, at the trial tomorrow. He asked me to defend you. He bented himself in that case. I mean, it, everything that was left unanswered, there's probable assumptions you can make. It's just odd because typically every little detail is directly tied to the case and is like, that's explained, that's explained, that's explained. And then there's a twist and he tie it up. That case was like, here's a bunch of evidence that we'll just never reference again, which is just like, ah, it's just weird. It's not a big deal. I can move on. If Mr. Wright has that much faith in you, Mr. Edgeworth, then I will gladly entrust my fate in your capable hands. But before that, I have one question. Yes? Do you know Wright? No, why would you ask that? Whenever you came up in our conversation, he would begin to act a little strange. Very little is left to the imagination. Yeah. Twist tie. Mr. Edgeworth, are you his friend? Friend? Well, in a sense, yes. It was five years ago. That's when I... That's when I deceived him. You deceived him? I heard that he was in a lot of pain after what happened. I know what a weak person I am. That's why I thought it was best if he never saw me again. I wanted him to just forget about me without learning the truth. Well, if you ask me, Wright is still suffering. And until he learns that truth, I don't think he will ever be able to truly recover. Iris, it's not too late. You should go to him. Tell him the truth. I'll defend you, but only if you agree to that one condition. All right, Mr. Edgeworth. I promise. Very well. I'll do everything in my power to get you an acquittal. Goodbye. Edgeworth a bro. She's in prison. Yeah, but he's gonna get her off the hook. That's enough information gathering for now. I should head to the crime scene. Goodbye. Beep, boop, bop, boop, beep, boo, doo, boo, doo, boo, doo. Um, I, okay, I was about to ask, is this, this, yeah. Maybe, maybe before we start gathering clues and piecing things together. Gotcha. That's fair. I understand why you wanted me to keep going a little smidge more, though, chat. I understand. So thank you. I'm glad I, I gl I'm glad I went a little further. So thank you. All right. Don't forget the cycle locks. That's true. I will forget if we just immediately start back up next time. So I might as well just eh, see what she wants before we move on. I will forget by next time, but that's fine. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to play as Edgeworth. That's cool. Since I've been handed this case, it's my duty to dig up all the answers. Understand? Yes, sir. Take that. Take that. The smallest flame can sometimes bathe a case in a whole new light. In my years in court, I've seen it happen over and over again. That's why I'm committed to searching until I've had those till I have those answers. Is it really true you didn't go to the inner temple last night? Yes, I swear. I already told you that. You said you didn't go because you were frightened. 
That's right. If that's the case, then the obvious question is, what were you so afraid of? Iris, I wonder, is this what frightened you so much that you couldn't even leave your own room? Was it Phoenix? Look at that man. Look at that man's face. Yeah, I don't have enough evidence. Gather some more evidence. That's fair. All right, that works. So yeah, we gotta learn what she was scared of. Boop, 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 boop. Can we chuck and try? Can we break into the Phoenix and Co. Right, the the Wright and Co. Law offices? Um, no, don't load. We're fine. All right, cool. All right, we'll come back to this next time. Shit. Fuck. Uh, I want to talk to Charlie. Let me get cop on alerts. Thanks so much for hanging. Joining me on all of case four and a little bit of case five. Appreciate it. It's a good case. I'm excited. I it, It's already nonsense in a good way. Um, Hey, chat. You know what time it is? You know what time it is? It's not Friday night, but it's what I felt like listening to. It's always Friday night somewhere. We can't talk to Charlie. I didn't even get to say goodbye. It's tool time. Tim the tool man Taylor. Uh Piranha Cube, thanks for 14 months. Max of Black Spire, thanks for the prime. Welcome to the house. Nero Nacho, thanks for 38 months. Bar Top Zero Report. Kate the Ish, thanks for 10 bits. Boy, you see she's a female and a college student. What? A female? And a college student? Neither of those are possible. Women aren't real and college isn't real. What are you talking about? Uh private guy, thanks for five years. Thank you so much. Enjoy your Kiwi Key. Appreciate it. Last Space Cadet. Thanks for 100 bits. Yeah, 30 to 40% of students were women, apparently, in the 90s. Azamaji, thanks for 50 bits. Sorry, I think this is why Mia started her own firm. All right. Jaeger Mage, thanks for 20 months. Poyo. Pangolin Montanari, thanks for four months. Welcome back. Azamaji, how is this guy more unhinged than a regular judge? Sailor Wave. Huh. Am I most liked? Am I least liked? Hmm. I keep going back to my least liked as being the Gordy Lake one. I, I felt like that was just a low point in terms of... It was mostly the pacing of that case. Just really bothered me. In terms of how many times you have to go back and forth to different places to get a single crumb. And then jump through every single environment and get another crumb. Um, so I just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, Polly was good. I mean, there were... There hasn't been a case where I'm like, none of that was good. There's no redeemable moments. Like, I enjoyed parts of the case, for sure. But the investigation was rough. Um, I, but yeah, was that 1-4? I don't remember the exact order of all of them, but... The story's good. Yeah, and also it's the first one with Lada. And Lada's... She's okay, right? But that's that's when I grew to be like, ah, Lada, because her witness testimony... It's like, it's, it's annoying when the witness is just always lying. <laughs> Because they're like, I thought it'd be better if I lied. It's like, they're not misremembering. They're not confused. It's like the 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 restaurant case at the French restaurant where he's like, I know what I saw, but it doesn't line up with the events. It's just like, I'm lying because I thought I should. I wasn't even told to by the prosecutor, really. So, not the clown then. Yeah, I, I'm, honestly, I, I I don't know if it's my favorite case, but the, 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 the clown case... It's not my favorite case, but in terms of what the twist was, I'm definitely, it's 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 part of the fact that I half predicted it, that it's so stupid that he slammed, he got bonked on the head and then his cape flew up onto the bus. Like, I did not get all that right, but just getting like 2% of it right, I'm like, that's so stupid. I just love that that was the answer to that riddle. Um, on the samurai yeah the, the the steel samurai in the first game again lots of part of that of that case that i enjoyed but also some pacing issues some and also you have to deal with old back a lot so it's like yeah there's just it's like typically there's some parts in some of those cases um overall hated i i understand why it's hated everyone being really weird and creepy to regina and the weird like love triangle thing definitely not a fan of that um and there's also a lot of stuff with the, where like the the um the owner of the big top, the uh, the whatever his name was, the guy who got killed, um, he's a bigger dude, and and uh, Maximilian is like a tall, slender guy, and he's like, oh, I'm walking in his cape, and it's just like, 
it's not extremely plausible that everyone's gonna be like, yep, nope, that's Maximilian. So there's like things like that. I'm like, eh, it's not like an airtight case, but it's fine. Now two instances, it yeah. Now we have two. So yeah, and most testimony sucks, right? So I don't know. I don't know what my favorite case is, but I don't know. There's no cases that I've absolutely hated. Every case so far has had at least a moment where I'm like, that was fucking great. So, people are dumb. Yeah. I mean, I'm also dumb, so that's why I enjoy it. It's good. Prize Smash is good. It is long as hell. Yeah. And yeah, the bonus case from Ace, Ace Stream 1 was good. Not my favorite, but I did like it a lot. But I, I think I judge a lot of it based off of how... How exas... How... How... how no, what's the right word for it? I don't know, just at, at the end of the case, if I'm laughing and sobbing and mad. To me, that's the perfect Ace Attorney case. I want to feel every emotion at once and feel it all strongly. And some cases definitely do that for me, so... Molding! Maybe, maybe molding! I don't know. That's the Shoot Takumi trifecta. Wasn't that Big Top? That, I mean, that's why, like, I mentioned Big Top. Like, yeah, the part of that is that a bit. Um, but anyway... Uh, thank you, Ozomagia, for the 50 bits. I, yeah, Canadian judge is wild. Garbage Devon, for 69 bits. Maybe it's the coffee talking, Mar. But if you got a... But you got a butt that won't quit. They got these big chewy pretzels here. From $5, get out of here. Thank you. That's supposed to say me instead of Mar. My phone sucks. No worries. Thanks for the follow-up bits. Uh, Miki Kai... Uh, 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 Kailana, thanks for 11 months. Thanks for the prime. Metastar, thanks for the raid. Lena Lin, thanks for 100 bits. Talking about saves coming. No worries. Thank you. White Hawk Workshop. Thanks for 53 months. 53 is apparently my limit on numbers. I can come up with an interesting way to relate my sub message to. Well, I'm surprised you made it that far. Thank you. Welcome back. Attempted pants. Thanks for three months. Enjoy your silver key. Don't worry about it. Azumaja. Thanks for 50 bits. Uh, why Mia was punching Grossberg in case one? Because of all the Dahlia manipulative BS. Bubbles. Thanks for 61 months. Crazy how we've never seen any of these characters before. Azumaja. Thanks for 50 bits. What possible reason would this person have to murder their beloved sister? Years later, yeah, that's her, Maya Faye. She killed her sister for no reason. There's no reason to think further about it. I mean, you're, you're, you're forgetting how easily the judge is swayed by whoever yelled at him last. As well as how creepy he feels like being towards the defendant, I guess. So, lasted longer. I forget the exact number, you yeah. know. It's almost some people's watch. I mean, I got it in the end, but thank you so much. Uh, Bentendo, this, thanks for 20 months. No spoils, chat, only diddles. Smash Man, thanks for 16 bits. They really gotten a lot of mileage out of Matt on guard's theme in this game. But these, the theme associated with the true Matt on guard. Or is it just meant to be a theme of, of just like truth revealed at this point? Uh, Maxter, thanks for five years. Barista. Enjoy Kiwi Key. Thank you very much. Awesome, you have 50 bits. Manfred probably gave him the business uh, for almost losing the trial, TBH. Right? Yeah, I do like how young Edgeworth more closely matched Manfred's poses. Obviously, far, far more than modern-day Edgeworth. Just the way that... I mean, a lot of his modern, normal poses are very Manfred, right? But it's, like, pretty much one-to-one -one with a lot of the way uh, Von Karmic held himself. Which is good. It's, it's good. He dressed him before the case? Yeah. Put, put all this tassels on and nonsense. The finger waggle. Mm -hmm. Probably Jeff just made over his sprites. That suit is... That, right! When we went to his office, there was a fancier version of his suit in there. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, hero. We're wrapping up for the day. His character won. Uh, but, 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 Smash my next to 96 bits. I seriously hate Dahlia. Every time she gives that sweet smile, I die a little inside. Join the club. They do a really good job with her art of, of making her believably sweet and charming that people would be like, oh, you poor delicate flower. But having that little that little edge to her where you're like, I don't trust you. That's that's a that's a thin line. So I think they did a good job with it. You love to hate her. Irrationally angry, whatever she spoke. I, I would say it's rationally angry personally. Uh, Jacob Bacon, thanks for the 96 bits. Dahlia's theme is named Distant Traces of Beauty. Felt like a good time to mention, given what just happened. And chat, do you still think you can fix her? 
Snowbeal, thanks for 56 months. If you're wondering why Mia felt compelled to hit something in anger every time someone was lovey-dovey towards Dolly in case one. Oh, we got there. Thank you. TFG Wall, thanks for soup. Uh, Jaeger Mage, thanks for soup. Low quality, thanks for the raid. Azumaji, thanks for 50 bits. Maya robs people to deal with her feelings of abandonment, but no matter how much she steals, she can never fill the void in her heart. No, the only thing that can, only thing that can fill the void in her heart is a burger. She need the burger. Garbage Nirvana, thanks for soup. According to interviews, everyone on the dev team except Shu himself hates Larry. That's hilarious. TFK Wall, thanks for soup. Pearl just jumps across and starts default dancing. Look at her go. Jacob Bacon, thanks for soup. The reason bikini so short is they were low on memory in the GBA release. That's excellent. Camera settings for soup. Soup train. Mortal piss. Thanks for the sub. Enjoy the emotes. Welcome to the house. Caffeine night. Thanks for 67 months. And it's here too. The suspense. Donny Asha. Thanks for 31 months. Five months from three years. Agron. Thanks again for the 462 leftover bits. And I hope the holiday season treats you well. And, and as ever, it, it feels like an annual tradition at this point. Uh, uh, I'm going to pour one out. For all the retail workers out there, because it's only October 1st, but there's already hol uh, Christmas decorations out there. So, uh, yeah, best anyone who has to work even adjacent to retail. Good luck with the coming holiday season. I hope it's not horrendous. Oh boy, Thanksgiving next month. Say a prayer. Yeah, I salute you. Where are the spooky decorations? No, no time. Gotta go to Christmas. You will be. Christmas. Support your workers, please. Yeah. <laughs> just be a just be a considerate human being. I mean, I'm not worried about anyone who would watch my streams. But yeah, there's a lot of assholes out there. Especially to employees of businesses for no reason. Anyway, uh Smash Bros. for 69 bits. Edgeworth's a psychonaut. Baby Kale thanks for 13 months. High Sci Fay, thanks for five. And Track Rock thanks for 40. Thanks for the lawyer stream. Still have no idea what's going on. At least the pixel art's great. Eh, pixel art's good. Hey, just saying, if you want to strike right before Black Friday, man, that'd really be a thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, that would just be... Oh. But think of the quarterly profits. Anyway, thanks for hanging. I uh, appreciate it. Happy October. Happy Dongtober. Again, make sure you um count over the, to the Discord server. Where there's, a, there's a link to it. Uh, Discord. Bam. It's just discord.gg slash Barry Kramer because I'm a narcissist and it's easy for me to remember. Um, and there's a Dongtober channel if you want to make art or if you just want to look at the cool art the whole month. It's Dongtober. Um, don't stop. Let's go raid Nicole. The Piss Award winner playing the Lies of P. It seems fitting. Um, I guess she's enjoying it. Excuse me. Because I know she did a, a sponsored stream to check it out. And she's still playing more of it, which is always cool to see. Um, so, yeah. Uh, 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 what what are we, we going to go yell at Nicole about? The Hot Amos. True. Correct. Um, I, do, I do like a barista. Go wish her a happy Halloween, because now it's October. It's officially spooky season. Turn about hot Amos. Oh. Oh. Female college student. Female college. I don't know how I feel about that as a raid message. I mean, if you, th if you think you can make it work, chat, I trust you. So. After, ask her if she's eating Play-Doh. I don't even know the context for that. I was, I was, I was at home, and Bath was streaming with Nicole, and then Bath kicks open the door and is like, did you eat Play-Doh as a child? And I was like, huh? And Bath was like, say yes. And I was like, I don't think the answer is yes, actually. And Bath was like, damn it. So I don't know what they're yelling about, but that's what my life is like when I'm not streaming. Anyway, goodbye. Go say to Nicole. Go watch some Lies of P. And uh, see you next time, maybe. Goodbye. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, thanks for watching, VOD watchers. Hope you're enjoying Ace Turner. I hope you're excited like I am for case five, where we're apparently miles. Didn't see that coming. Uh, so thanks for watching. Take care. See you. Goodbye. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.